Okay. Welcome everyone. <laughs> now that I'm unmuted, my name is Anna Aranda and I'm the head of advanced training here at IDC. Um, obviously, we would love to have you all here uh, with the open doors, but uh, there are advantages to Zoom as we can reach out further uh, than if you, you were to come here to, to, to the Institute. Um, some basic uh, instructions for the session. So you'll receive the program. We're gonna have a main session here uh, on this room and there's gonna be a brief introduction to our training programs uh, followed by uh, more specific information on the summer school by Lunesh here. If you look, Lunesh Tiki, say hi. And then followed by uh, George Carneiro, the PhD program director. Uh, after this, uh, we are going to open two breakout rooms. So if you're interested in summer school, please join the summer school uh, breakout room. If you're interested more uh, about the PhD program, please join the PhD program IBB. And uh, you, you will meet not only George and Munez, but also Patricia here, my colleague from the advanced training unit and some students, um, PhD students and some former summer school students that attended the summer school last year. I'm going to now uh, start sharing my screen with you. That I hope now it's right. Can somebody acknowledge that you're not being yes, presented with you. Right. Okay. So welcome to the open session to university students. Um, these are our doors through Zoom. So, um, and as I stated, the, the program will have a, uh, the welcomes. We'll talk a bit about the summer school program, PhD program, and then you'll have these parallel sessions that you can join freely. Um, as some of you uh, showed an interest in knowing a little bit more about the master's projects, if the information that I now have to is not enough, please stay with me on the main session and I can answer any questions that you may have. So the Instituto Gulbenkian Ciencia, IGC's motto is solving tomorrow's challenges today through discovery driven scientific questions, mainly in the life sciences. And we see science as an open and participative activity at the heart of society. Um, last year, uh, some colleagues of ours um, made a virtual tour that is quite fun, uh, although it's in Portuguese. Um, so for those of you that don't speak Portuguese, it's rather unfortunate. But if you, if you want to come to IGC virtually, please visit and on the chat, you will see the link to this virtual tour that you can, and you can follow. It's a way to visit the Institute virtually. Um, but because images and sounds speak more than I could ever <laughs> present to you the IGC virtually, I would like to share with you um, a video uh, that we made with just IGC at a glance. I'm just going to show you a little bit. So if you're interested in watching the whole video, we'll also share with you the link uh, on the chat that I really encourage you to download um, the links that we provide you. The IGC is a wonderful place. It will be 60 years next year, and it's been always a lighthouse of Portuguese science and also international science. So for a long time, the IGC has been focusing on fundamental science because we do believe that the great discoveries come from really doing discovery-based science. And we focus at the moment on understanding 
the organism, how, the orga how our body is made, but also in our connection to the environment, to the physical environment, like for example the, the climate or the, the soil that the plants live on, but also the, the biological environment, our relation with our microbes, for example, be it uh, beneficial microbes or, or parasites, for example, but also the social environment. So if you're interested in, in seeing the rest, please check uh, the link that has ju just been shared on, on the chat. Ah, sorry. So uh, I will now introduce to you um, Lunesh and you can see all, 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 this is the summer school. So the summer school is organized by several people. Um, we have Lunesh, Patricia, Mariana here and Marco, Pedro and myself. Um, so it's a program directed to undergraduate students mainly, and Lunesh, after uh, I speak, will talk a little bit about this, so I'm not going to go into it. Um, also, we have a master's project that it's not a program, but um, our uh, group leaders uh, provide, together with, with people from the labs, um, are interested in uh, several, they, they present some projects that uh, you can have a look in our, in our website that it's here. So if you're interested, if you're enrolled in a master's program and you want to do your thesis here at the IGC, you can have a look at the projects available. If the projects available are not within the area of, of, of your interest, you can also check the, the our research groups and you can also contact the, the group leaders directly. So the fact that the project or group is not represented on the, on the list, it doesn't mean that you cannot contact. And actually, I strongly encourage you just to show for this you need to be uh, enrolled I reinforce this because we do not provide master's degrees okay so you need to be enrolled in university in order to, to, to do this so this is a list of supervisors and projects currently available they're in constant change so the, there isn't a call it's open in permanence so Today there may be a project and tomorrow there is another project, but again, spontaneous applications are welcome. So if you, if you go on the website right now, you will see this, the, these projects that I am listing here. Again, we will be sharing with you a document, a PDF with a list of projects available. If you want to have a look with a bit more detail, some have an abstract and it has a, a contact name that you can, you can contact if you're interested in one of them. Then we have uh, at PhD level, we have a PhD program and George is going to tell you a little bit about this. And the image we have here is all of these people, as you can see, because IGC in all that we do, we are made of people. And, and I'm sure George is going to refer that quite a lot. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to move on and say that we also have a, a postdoctoral uh, pr training program. It's a Ponte Fellowships in Quantitative Biology. So we have postdocs also here working with us and they're usually recruited through the labs. And at the moment we have this training program that is more specific for uh, people from quantitative biology to come here. But this is at the later stage. So I, I'm just referring so that you know that it's quite um, diverse. Then we have the Gulbenkian Training Program in Bioinformatics. These are courses that are short courses, about one to two, two weeks, but mainly one week. At the moment, we have these practical statistics for the life sciences. This program is coordinated by Pedro. So if you're interested in, in these short courses, they're open to anyone, even outside the institution, and you can apply. And as you can see here, we have these courses in preparation that are awaiting data confirmation, but they should happen this year. So if you're interested, have a look at the website. We are sharing all the links to these web pages through the chat again, and you can check a bit later. Uh, lastly, if you are a PALOP, so basically a, 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 port, uh, a person from uh, African, Portuguese speaking country or descendant of one of those, uh, we have um, uh, a program that at the moment there is no call, but 
if you are and if you're interested in coming to do either your bachelor or your master's thesis here with us at IGC or for a sabbatical if you know somebody uh, please share or stay uh, tuned to, uh, to the website. So I'll now move on the word to my colleagues because they can tell you everything a little, much better than I can, but this is just a summary. If you're interested in receiving this or that you have an overview of all the calls open, we can share with this after, just let us know that you're interested. And Monesh, the floor is all yours. So thank you, Anna. Thank you for the overview. So my name is Lunes Shiki. Uh, I, I will be presenting uh, the summer school today. So I'm a principal investigator here at the IGC. I also work as a CNRS researcher in France, but uh, here I will be presenting something very different. So I will first share my screen. Um, I hope this works. Can you see it? Yes, it's working. It's working. So. Uh, this is uh, the team of people involved in the summer school. What you, uh, I will not be developing a lot. The idea was more maybe to have a short introduction for you to understand what the summer school is about. So for you to, to see the people involved that you could contact if you have questions, we are easy to find in the IGC web, uh, website. What is important to know about so this, this uh, summer school is that it is open uh, and uh, should have um, a structure in which there is one week, which is the, uh, the week of the, we can see my mouse, right? So from the 25 to 29 July, which will be uh, a week during which there will be presentations around the IGC. The format that we have decided uh, is uh, uh, divided between uh, inside and online. And the idea is that we should be hosting about uh, 15, 16 students uh, locally at the IGC and about 16 students that would be uh, selected for an online uh, presence. In the mornings would be more related, would be more directed so to the people who are physically present at the IGC and the afternoons would be for the whole group of 32 students. So you can see here the different days. Uh, there is no point going into too many details because we'll have a whole session about that. Uh, of course, uh, Patricia and Anna, who are helping uh, in many details, can intervene at any moment to, in to give more details about what I'm saying right now. Uh, what is important to know is that <clears throat> the reason why we're taking 16 students is that uh, that's about the number of internships that we are able to offer now based on the availability of uh, PIs to receive students during that period. So there, uh, you can see here the different PIs uh, represented or heads of facilities. And they, they, uh, they, they have proposed projects that you can find on the website that will give you an idea of, uh, of the kind of projects that can happen. Unfortunately, there is something missing here in the text, but so the idea would be this one week, 25, 29 July, and then the internship would be in August with a final presentation in the last week of August. Uh, the different hosting labs are represented here. You saw the pictures of the PIs that you can see they're very diff different uh, types of group from functional ecology, evolutionary biology with a, with a project which is quite theoretical. There is evolution and development, for instance, but there is also cell cycle regulation, information. Well, uh, you, we will see that more uh, later. So the call is opening today, but will close on the 31st of March to apply. And uh, as can be as is written here, you have uh, undergraduate undergraduate students from pretty much any scientific background. Um, and I'll stop here unless somebody wants to add uh, something. I mean, here is a picture of um, the presentation that were given last year by the students at the end of August. Uh, uh, if you do not want to come after that picture, I don't know what I can say to convince you. And I think that's it for me now. Patricia, if you want to yeah. add a word. I'll just add that in the next session, we'll have two participants from last year. So apart from us, you can also uh, pose direct questions to Sphere and to Christina, who Sphere is a medical student. I think Christina 
comes from Serbia and she's actually back at the IGC for a placement. So you can, I think you can ask questions from us, but also hear from them directly. That's it. Okay, thank you very much, Patricia. And now, otherwise, I think it's uh, it's for the PhD presentation, PhD program presentation, I guess. Okay. Right. So I'll take over from here. So let me see if I can share my screen. Uh -huh. Okay. So. Are you guys seeing something like a... Yes, it's working. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so th this is just a slide that we have seen before. I'm just going to make a disclaimer to Katarina Ninkovic because there will be some slides repeated from the presentation in the summer school last year. And this also serves to as an introduction to the style of IGC. This is a family. So we remember people that have participated in these kind of things. Okay. So now next slide is just an idiotic slide saying essentially where we are on this presentation. Okay. And now let's get to business. So the IGC is not a university. So we don't confer degrees, uh, PhD degrees. But the truth is that actually we, we know how to do it, okay? We have been doing PhD programs, uh, structured PhD programs way before many of you were born, if not all of you were born, okay? So I was doing my PhD around this period, not in this structured program. And so this is just not to say much more of this, but just to, that we did PhD programs from biomedicine to computational biology, medical uh, PhDs, and this is our current in-house uh, PhD program, the Integrative Biology and Biomedicine, okay? And uh, so the degree is given by the University Nova and ISPA, and so this is a program that is accredited by the National Agency for uh, accreditation of the PhD programs, not very important, and also financed by FCT, the National Funding Agents for Science. But essentially, this is a unique opportunity for PhD students, okay? And the candidate PhD students, the, the call is open until March 11. So if you can actually spread the word to any interesting candidate, just do it. And this is a slide to remind me because I'm the director of the program. And so I have to solve this problem, which is in my, it's my obsession because of one thing, we are in the 21st century, okay? And uh, if you think about it, the, it's the century of biology. People say this a lot, but if you look at the uh, training and education of people from exact science, mathematics, engineering, physics, uh, they have no clue about biology. Okay, we have all these uh, models of uh, COVID-19 that appeared with made by mathematicians that have no clue about uh, what you are doing. And it's just a simple example of it. But it's really most of the challenges that we are dealing today at society level are uh, at level of biology, but most of the, the people that are not trained in biology have no clue of the real understanding of biology. Now, at the same time, we are in the times of big data and AI, okay? We are all enthusiastic with this. Uh, there is self-driving cars, self-driving microscopes. There is all sorts of things based on AI. And it's funny that most of the students trained in biological science and biomedical sciences, they have no clue about math and, uh, and programming or something like that. So these kind of things like artificial intelligence models looks, is a little bit like magic, okay? It's uh, like going back to war, uh, to Harry Potter's world where everything is magic and we don't understand what these black boxes are doing. And this is a bit problematic, okay? And so, so this is the challenge that we are trying to solve in the IBB is trying to mix these things together. It's not easy. And uh, I keep putting this slide just to remind me that I have to say this because this is my challenge, okay? Now, 
another thing that is important. So this is basically the structure of our program. There is always an international call that uh, students get in, they're highly selected. Then we have something like six months of courses. At the end of these six months of courses, that's when people start choosing their lab and their PhD project, not here, here, okay? And uh, once they go through this process, they spend six months in the lab, and uh, in the end of this, they consolidate their project, and then they are into the research project, okay? And in the end of all these 3.5, three and a half years to four years, they are delivering the thesis, and that's the expectation and going to the research or into the job market. Now, I want to emphasize one thing, which is the difference with other PhD programs and the trend in Europe is to make the PhD education to become three years, okay? And uh, compare that with three and uh, four and a half years, which is what, what we do. And uh, essentially you get into your PhD project already with a PI and with a project that most of the time is not given and not designed by yourself, okay, by the PhD student. Just adopt something and then you have uh, three years to just run and try to deliver a paper or two papers or something like that. We don't do that here, okay? So we put the emphasis on the students, okay? We recruit students based on their merit and potential. And these courses are just made such that they know what, uh, what is being done at IGC and what the biology is. And it's in the end that the students come up with their own project, okay? And they choose a lab in the institute to do the PhD, quite different. So this is just to say that we really take pride in the independence of our students, okay? So that's something that we, it's very unique in our PhD program, okay? In practice, it doesn't mean that all the PhD students will be independent, but we can discuss that in the session after this. Okay. Now, I was telling you, people are recruited by their own merit and typically we take something about 10 people, a little bit less, sometimes more. So this is the collection of 2019. You will speak to two of them. So, and uh, this is the collection of 2020. It was a smaller number. And I like this picture because it tells you that these guys, they were the unfortunate or unfortunate guys that started the PhD with masks and COVID. They are my heroes, okay? And so I love this transition that now they can go around in the courtyard of the institute. That's the courtyard, part of the, our institute without masks, okay? This is the new generation, which uh, Christmas party, okay, in Lisbon and so on, just to tell you that they, they do have fun. All these people have been selected by uh, their CV, what they want to do in life, and an interview. And the interview, essentially what we try to do is to see if we can adopt them, adopt them as our peers. And that's essentially what we do in the interviews. So if you are considering applying here, that's essentially what we do in the interview. Don't try to prepare things and so on, just be yourself because we want to recruit colleagues that we can work with, okay? Now, so the international call is open and we uh, courses like most PhD programs that are structured. I was telling you, so we cover everything from history to biological concepts to ecology and so on. I'm not going to bother you with this. All this is in the website. This is just to illustrate that we can have people in our faculty. It's not only our PIs, but we have a hundred people uh, uh, within the, the institute and from outside. This guy here, for everyone that has ever studied developmental biology, and uh, took a book that's called the Gilbert with the Gilbert the Gilbert. That's the Gilbert himself. Okay, giving a lecture on Zoom to our students. Okay, and uh, and so this unfortunately was the poor guys of the 2020 having classes on Zoom. It's with great people like uh, Maria Joan or or Scott Gilbert but it's still on Zoom. This year, it was a mixed thing, so with people in the room, some people remote and so on, but we, we have to adapt. But essentially, these courses just showcase not only all the problems, open problems in biology, but also the research that is done in the Institute. And why? Because after this, 
the students have to choose their project, okay? And uh, they have to choose uh, a tremendous thing. So this is the photo in the background is our friend Paulo, who is a physicist, talking about the research that he's doing in his lab. And this was with, during the PI retreat in the February 14, uh, where all the PIs that could receive students were presenting their projects. I don't have this so that you can read, but it's just to call your attention that we have things like genome maintenance and evolution to plants, to living physics, anything. Okay, so we have a very eclectic mixture of people and all our PIs are extremely collaborative. So, so the difficulty of our PhD students is actually coming up with a project in amongst all these choice, okay? and uh, choosing. Uh, so it's what the French call the embarras du choix. And our friend Lunez will just correct all my bad accent. But that's essentially the difficulty of choosing. That's one of their problems. They manage, and everyone manages. And there is this, typically this session, which, um, which is just basically me, the director of the program. While they are in the courses, they are full on my full responsibility. But from then on, they pass to the lab. And this is essentially the last session, uh, photos from 2021. And you will see first thing, very informal, because all these kids, and sorry to call them kids, but I'm getting old, uh, they have my phone number. So if there is a problem they have to solve, they can call me. And of course, you can see that I'm a human. So I'm saying very intelligent things from the reaction of uh, Katrina funny things or just a preposterous thing that embarrassed uh, Camilla. That's a typical thing here, which will say uh, whatever. But this is just to tell you the scale at which we work. It's really a family type of thing. Okay. And uh, of course, in, the students are independent, but this is again, I, I added a few things. So these are thesis committees. So each student in addition to the supervisor or supervisors is followed by a thesis committee, which are two PIs that will meet them regularly. There is an annual workshop where they present the project to the whole community. There is the fantastic event, which is every year, what we call the Anius, which is the annual meeting of Gulbenkian students, okay? Which is essentially a student retreat where there is no PIs, there is no one there except students and whoever they decide to invite. And uh, I'm saying this because Katya and uh, I'm already, you, Katia is already saying, oh, no, no, there's other people. Of course, there's stupid people like me, the director of the program that has to be there and this kind of stuff. But otherwise, they invite whoever they want, be abroad or, or so on. And so, and these are annual meetings where the students uh, can discuss with their peers in the absence of any interference and so on. It's just, just a fantastic thing. And I want to emphasize that. Now, but the most important thing is the PhD research, because it doesn't matter courses, doesn't matter all these supports in the end, is the research, okay? And now to tell you about research, you know, and people, let's brag a little bit, okay? People measure science by the quality of science and the journals and the papers that you publish and so on. It's not very good, but if you actually take the live and right ranking of the universities, the IGC doesn't rank bad. Okay, let's say. So we are on peer with the Wiseman Institute in Israel and the Imperial College of London, the John Hopkins and so on. Princeton, that's our peers, okay? This of course, you will say, oh, George, you are, you are lying. Yeah, no, I'm not. This is actually what this means. So this is the percentage of papers in the top 10% of the areas and this kind of stuff. And, and we do that means one thing that these are universities, we are a research institute and probably our productivity is overestimated. But I will let you judge by more, way more interesting things, which is the science that we do. These are papers by PhD students, okay? And I, I put this just to illustrate what kind of crazy things we do, okay? And it goes from, I don't know, demographic uh, history of lemurs. And this is a paper with uh, by a student called Gabriel Escarlata with uh, our friend Lunes. So this is just essentially conservation in this kind of stuff. We have developmental biology, Andre Diaz with Moises Malo, 
uh, understanding the vertebral, vertebrate axial elongation process, sorry. We have things like Roxana with sympathetic neurons and uh, how the sympathetic neurons affect uh, metabolism and the obesity. We have uh, evolution in the gut. We have uh, repurposing of uh, drugs to, um, to uh, uh, fight sepsis. We have mathematical models, a very detailed uh, evolution of the uh, mechanism of simplosome amplification. Again, this is just to illustrate that that's the kind of science that we do, okay? Uh, I was doing the annual report of our institute. Our students publish as, P as first authors, 20% of the papers of the institute, okay? Which uh, we are very proud of that, okay? Now, what else? Okay, they do this because first, we have this fantastic uh, community of uh, seminars. There was this ugly period of the, the COVID where it was all on Zoom, but still rich. Okay, still everyone participating with the cameras on. And, and it, it is the discussion and the quality of discussion never faded away. We have open space labs, we have computer facilities, we have fantastic facilities for from things to, to grow flies or to grow antigen free animals and germ free animals, which means inside these boxes, there are mice that have never seen a bacteria, okay? And this is fantastic because actually, if you, if you are a, an animal house personnel, this is fantastic because it doesn't smell. Once you take off the, the the cages where they are typically it smells very bad with the pee and the poop and all that germ-free animal poop and and pee doesn't smell which is good for the animal caretakers okay so take that as a curiosity and by the way you look this here this is something that was invented by nasa so that you can dock uh, spaceships to other spaceships and allows us to put things here to put thing, material and food and take off the cages without any contact between the air in that thing and the outside so we have all, all these kind of goodies so that uh, people can play i don't know if you ever seen a batman movie from the 80s where there was this joker complaining that of the little toys that batman had in his belt to play if you come to IGC, you have a pretty good rich belt to, to do all your experiments that you can do, okay? And you are not, it's quite cool. I think that quite frankly, the, the limit will be your imagination, okay? And overdoing it, I'm pretty sure the students that are here are saying, no, 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 it's not like that. We have difficulties, of course, everyone has, okay? But uh, that's the main limitation will always be your imagination. Now, this image is, I think, the thing that illustrates the best resource at IGC, okay? Which is the community of people. So everyone here is treated as a peer. So here you've seen, this is Monica, okay? And uh, we have, people here that are PIs, uh, PIs, facility members, everyone together, okay? Including our lovely Sophia that takes care of the feeding as well and keeping us health, happy, okay? And, and it's just a fantastic community. And just to illustrate this, this is a, a, qu a quote from a former student, Anna Stankovic, and she, she is in a video that we have in our website that we keep, although the video is a little bit oldish, but it's so good that we actually keep it. And, uh, and she, at some point, uh, she's talking about the IGC and she says, I always feel that the whole IGC is doing my PhD. Okay. And that's something that is true because we all take this thing seriously, as uh, science seriously. And so every time that we see a student presenting projects, we go and discuss with them and criticize them sometimes harshly, sometimes constructively and more encouraging, but it's always in a good sense, okay? And so you are confident that you will always have partners to discuss with if you want, 
Okay. And that's basically what I wanted to tell you because all the details that you, if you are curious then in the session about the PhD programs will, will be there to answer all your questions. And I'm sure Katya and Romana will destroy all my propaganda and just tell you about the real institute, okay? And that's it. So I'll keep this slide. So if you have immediate questions, uh, but at the same time that you can see the polls that are open and so on. Any question? Uh, just for the students to know, uh, the master's projects that are published on the web page are the ones that the PIs have proposed. So they're yes. But it is very possible that if you contact the PI, he may have been too busy when he wanted to. Pro when the deadline was to propose to write a project, might might have ideas for projects. So don't be shy contact people if you are interested beyond the projects that you see. There will be PIs that may have interesting projects. Just go, ask, don't be shy, bother PIs. That's what they're supposed to do, help you, okay? Okay, so it's nice to have all you uh, here. So uh, as I was, uh, I gave a very quick overview of uh, the summer school. If you have questions, uh, maybe that's the right moment. And we can then also see with the, 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 the students who had been here with us last year, who would be happy to share their experiences. Maybe that could be a, a nice way to start. Patricia, if you want to. Yeah, actually, I just realized we have a third student that was here last yeah, which is Katerina. Look at her now. Hi, Katerina. Hi, yes, <laughs> maybe that is a good way to, to start because um, there's a very big difference between last year's um, session where we've invited Sophia and uh, Katerina is also here and Christina. I don't know. I can't see you right now, but maybe you can just say hello. Um, yeah, I'm here also. Okay, good. Sorry. <laughs> to, um, because uh, I think last year there was a, we were still under a lot of COVID restrictions, so it was mainly the sessions were mainly on Zoom. And as Luna said, this year we are we're actually trying to we've tried to build up a whole program around uh, things being more um, re in 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 person in, in presence and more residential. Uh, still. Uh, the maximum number of students that we will choose is 16 for the labs, but we will have 32 for um, the overall seminars. Um, just two quick, I think, Lonis, I think you've, you have actually said it, but just to quickly, I, I think you, you probably all know, I'll put here the, in the chat room what the link is for, for the website, but there is a, there is a program there, uh, a, a general program. And you will also find um, the, not just the labs are available, but also the projects that are available. So you can choose up to two projects and then, um, and then we will get all the applications and, and see uh, how we can accommodate everybody. Um, Luna, is there? Yeah, you... I, 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 I think it's important that you understand the timing for you if it fits with your timing. So there's one week, which will be like presentation of IGC with some people in, some people online. Then there is the three, four weeks of project in one of the, uh, so there are uh, 12 labs, but 14 projects currently, I think. Yes. Uh, and you can see the list and uh, you should not hesitate to go to the website, check the projects, try to understand what the groups do. If you have specific questions about the project, do not hesitate to ask them now or come back to us if you are unsure about, uh, about asking today because you don't, you're worried about asking what you think is a stupid question. You think, oh my God, if I ask that question. So if you don't feel comfortable, wait and ask later, but Use this session, that's for you. You know, you really, we're trying to help. Now, uh, if Patricia agrees, we could uh, maybe ask the different persons uh, from last year, the students. So I think there is Sofia Faria, there is Kristina Petrovic. I'm not sure if I pronounced well, I apologize. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> and, and then 
And there's Katarina as well. Yeah, because, exactly, Katarina, but I, I can't see the name, but uh, there are many pages. So, um, you have one question in chat. Ah, there is yes. a question. Okay, that's the other I'll, thing. I'll address that uh, as soon as. Uh, can, can we just have a quick introduction from each one of you and say. But, you know, um, uh, Patricia, there is a question. You want to uh, answer it right now? That's fine too. So, yes, master students. The question is: I, I am a master student. Can I apply from Rafaela? Uh, yes, of course. It is for undergraduates. Um, so, whichever stage you're at, there are a lot of we call it integrated masters, but it still a master student is very welcome to apply. Um, so from you know from the first three years of undergraduate to two more years of masters uh, if you're doing a masters also you are eligible um uh, the, i'll just mention very quickly as well you you might have visited already the platform uh there is a format which is around uh, an application form which is in that platform online we don't take cvs please do not send your cvs do not ask how to send your cv just use the platform to Tell us about yourself through the motivational letters, through you know the, what uh, the boxes there are there about your academic um, experience. We don't expect you to have done lots of stuff, but uh, do think about why you want to come here, why you think it's this is going to make a difference um, in your path, and um, and and try and work out. Uh, through that, uh, through the through the application form, where you can fit your interests as well as your experience and your motivation. Uh, but please don't send CVs because we, there is no space in, in the application to have them, and it wouldn't be fair for us to compare CVs. So um, that's why there is a platform to do it. Um, I think I can. I, maybe I'll move on to. Uh, to Sophia, if that's all right. If you could just say, because I, I remember the three of you and I know you've got very different uh, backgrounds, one. And to uh, Katerina, you, you're the only one who actually only had access to the Zoom classes. So maybe you can also talk about how, I mean, I think this year is going to be very different, but uh, you know, uh, Sophia and Christina were here for the labs. So if you could also mention that and I'll give the word to Sophia. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sofia, I'm a third year medical student and I went, he I, I went to the IGC in the last summer. Um, so first of all, I, I'm a medical student, but I've always been interested in research, mainly uh, through, as my, as my, my medical uh, course evolves, I, I understand that maybe I don't want to be a clinician and I really like to do research and I wanted to know more about it. I wanted to experience it and to see uh, if it made sense for me and if it would be something that really interested me. So I saw the opportunity of IGC and I decided to apply. Um, and first of all, as Patricia, Patricia said, we had a week of online classes. All we were about, I'm not sure, but like 30 to 40, I'm, I'm not completely sure, uh, students taking online, fully online seminars. Uh, and they, they, we had seminars in different areas. And of course, it, it was very, very enlightening to understand the more, a little bit more of the research that is done at, at the IGC and to contact with different PIs. And we were able to talk to very interesting people. And also we had uh, some testimonies of previous um, PhD and previous uh, PhD students and PIs at the IGC, which was also very, very good to, to see uh, what they had to say about the IGC, what they felt the IGC had gave them, and, and also to understand their career paths as different and diverse scientists. Um, and then we had four weeks of internships at the IGC. I did my internship in Monica Tenkur's lab, uh, the cell cycle regulation lab, and I was more directly oriented by uh, Katerina Pnedo, who is a, a PhD student at Monica's lab. Um, and my project was regarding, uh, was identifying new players or maybe trying to understand new players, new uh, protein players in uh, central biogenesis regulation. So what we did uh, was to overexpress and also um, knock down 
some genes that we thought would be candidates uh, for uh, central biogenesis regulation and central biogenesis and central division duplication. I'm sorry, um, and maybe and then we tried to understand what was the the effect on the phenotype that we were seeing on our cells. So. I used uh, human cell lines. I used uh, uh, U2OS cell lines, if anyone is interested to know. And uh, obviously, I didn't have that much lab experience before. And I I can stress this further. It was very, very, I, I learned a lot. I, I, I went into the IGC and I had no uh, independence. I, I had no idea of what I was doing. And at the end of the, by the end of the month, I felt that I truly understood what I had been doing. I, I felt very comfortable. I, my supervisor always uh, tried to give me more independence and made me do things by myself. And, and that obviously made me learn a lot. Um, and so you use that cell line and, and afterwards we, we used immunofluorescence to try to understand what was the phenotype. So I also worked with uh, uh, immunofluorescence microscopy, which was also very, very good and, and uh, a part that I liked very much. And overall, I think the most valuable thing or useful thing I can say to you is what, what the summer school gave me more than what I did there. Um, and it, I believe it gave me a more real uh, portrait or idea of what is to be a sci of what it is to be a scientist and what, what it means to do science and it's not also always uh, perfect as we see in the books and all, not always easy not always linear but it's very very challenging it makes you think a lot it makes you uh, do questions and be always uh, make sure that, that you are asking the right questions and doing trying to answer them in the right ways and i i believe i i still have not know, have no knowledge to to all to be telling you this. This was only what I got for from a month, which was a very very short experience. I still feel like I have no experience at all, uh, but I believe it opened uh, some horizons and gave me more insights of on what it truly means to do science. And it was an amazing month. Uh, and obviously, uh, the whole com IGC community is is very open and working there is very very pleasing as you have a, a garden and you can take your laptop to the garden and just work by <laughs> by a very next to the to next to the garden and to everyone so i believe this is what i had to tell you i hope it's useful in some way and you have if you have any questions just feel free to answer thank you can we maybe have all the three of you talking and then we yeah. do questions at that yeah. right? Okay. Yes, I think so. Unless, unless there is an urging question. But uh, thank you, uh, Sophia. <laughs> now I want to do an internship. <laughs> Christina, do you want to go? Yeah, I can go next. Uh, so I'm, I come from the University of Belgrade, uh, Faculty of Biology, and I'm on my fourth year of bachelor's because that's how it is in Serbia. We have four years of bachelor and then one year of master. Uh, and in our university for years, it, uh, we have this evening where uh, older students uh, talk about their uh, experiences on internships. And uh, when I was on my second year, a student uh, was talking about IGC summer school uh, and she did a really good job on presenting it. So I immediately I wanted to apply uh, and I did so, but that year was uh, the summer school was only in online format. So in my second year, I only attended the online version of summer school, but that made me even more keen on uh, applying next year. So I did it again in third year and uh, eventually came here to IGC. Uh, I was in uh, evolution and development lab and uh, Honestly, at first, I didn't expect a project like that uh, because uh, it was more related to immunity and I really didn't know much about it. But it's amazing how much you can learn in that, that one month. And uh, not only the things that you do practically in lab, uh, I also started reading a bunch of papers on, on that topic and got really 
interested in it and that's uh, how I'm here again <laughs> I guess I um, I just uh, talked with my PI about the opportunity to, to come again and as uh, people were saying in the main session for master thesis and for PhD it's always good to approach P, uh, PI directly and you can maybe manage some things uh, out so yeah that's basically how I'm here again uh, aside from that, I really agree with everything that Sophia said. Uh, it, it was really wonderful experience and people were really supportive all the way through. And from the first day to the last day uh, of the presentations, uh, when I was about to present my results, I was like, okay, uh, I, I met so many things up during the, that first week, but I learned so much from that part. Uh, I really don't have anything else. Okay, thank you. Katerina, do you want to tell us about your experience? Yeah, well, I would just like to add that although I didn't have the lab experience, right, unfortunately, um, I did immensely enjoy the online summer school and I would encourage anyone who is perhaps reluctant to take on the lab experience or is not sure whether or not he or she is able to come to Portugal at all to try and, and at least apply for the online summer school because I come from a biochemical background and I was only a first year last year when I originally heard the, the, the seminars and I was particularly captivated by how they gave me an, a, a completely different perspective of how science is done, right? Because they talked about how to come up with ideas, how to nurture those ideas and how to actually uh, present them and uh, create them within an experiment, how to test them and how to actually manage to find your way through while you're doing your PhD, your research, whatever. And they love the human factor in all of that because everyone who talked to us, right? were extremely they were realistic about what science is they did not sugarcoat it they did not present it in a way that is usually presented to children with the popular science and with everything they told you up front okay it is hard and you have to analyze a lot of data and you have to work constantly and perhaps you will mess up a lot but the experience was definitely it was it was something that I don't think would, I would have gotten anywhere else. And I especially liked the talk Antonio Continuo gave on, on what questions are actually. And when one has a question that one loves all the time, one has to explore it. And I'm eternally grateful for having that opportunity. So definitely anybody should apply because it really is something a young scientist should go through. Okay, thank you. He's going to be here this year again, just to let you know. <laughs> so <laughs> so Lunas uh, and Mark is also here. We've got Lunas and Mark from this, this year's committee. Uh, if I, Lunas, I'm just going to pass it on to you or if anybody has any questions. I mean, uh, yeah, I wanted, in fact, to mention, so today, so we have three persons who have been uh, doing the summer school in different years. Uh, you, we also have, so Patricia, Anna, Anna is maybe not around now, she's in, maybe in the other part, but uh, uh, Patricia, who is helping organize it. And there is also Marco, whom I should mention, because he's not only a, a very nice organizer, but he's also going to host a, a student. Um, then there are different possibilities. Remember, the idea here is to really answer your question. You don't know how the summer school works. I can go back to some of the slides and maybe some of you may have questions when you see the slides. Or uh, I could, for instance, ask also Marco to explain, for instance, the kind of project he's been proposed, he's been suggesting, which would be a good way to give a specific example of one project by somebody involved both in the organization and in the, the project. So I can start by sharing maybe the slides again. 
and then uh, ask Marco to talk when we arrive at the part of the project. Is that okay? Okay. Absolutely, yes. So, uh, and of course, you can still uh, keep asking questions on the chat. We're trying to, to, to check that with Patricia. I'm not very good at multitasking, but uh, thanks to Patricia, we can manage two persons doing two tasks. Uh, let, uh, okay, sorry. Okay, no. Let me first go back to... Okay, sorry. Okay, um, we go back. And now, now I should be able to share. Sorry, there is this issue. Uh, slideshow. That should be the one. Okay, so I mean, this first slide is really just uh, about uh, who who is involved. So it's not very. I mean, it is important. Uh, there is one person who is not around here, who is Mariana, whom we didn't mention. And Mariana is uh, involved in these questions of collabora collaborations of institutions. And she'll be talking a bit about that during the summer school for people, maybe also for you to understand how uh, sometimes important questions cannot be solved by one institution, an international or national, in fact, in her case, it's national, institution being linked because they bring different technologies or different different types of expertise. Okay, uh, I mean, here there is no need to spend too much time. So this is the idea as I was explaining. I don't know if there are questions about this general program, which is that week between the 25 and 29th of July, there will be morning in which there will be different types of uh, uh, actual, let's say, activities at the IGC for the 16 students who will be selected to come uh, inside. In the afternoons, there will be presentations, discussions uh, uh, with the 32 students online. Okay. And uh, I don't know if there are first questions, if this is unclear to some of you. So, yes, maybe I can hear things, but now I'm trying to. Uh, there is a question that I haven't seen. No, no question. Sorry, I, I heard the mess and noise. There is not. Can I ask a question? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, so, will all the students that will be for in the presential format, the 16 students, be granted with scholarships to for accommodation and traveling, or that is just specific to some of the students? So it's a good question, and I'll let Patricia <laughs> answer. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's usually dealt with the training office, and the, um, the fellowships are granted to people outside Lisbon. And they, what we do, we don't uh, give money to people, that's not the idea. The idea is to create conditions for them to be able to come over. So obviously the ones who are in Lisbon in Oeiras, the greater Lisbon area, shouldn't necessarily need accommodation or traveling so that those fellowships are for those students who will be who being chosen would come from out, outside Lisbon including from abroad there is a fixed uh, uh, budget obviously but um, we would uh, we would cover their travel expenses their flights or their bus their coach whatever and uh, and we would find them a place to stay uh yeah. whilst they're in during the the whole of the summer school so during the the first week uh and during the labs okay thanks in, in no it's a very good uh thank you very much carolina it's a fundamental question of course uh, i think the general thing is apply there will be a moment in which you had to clarify also if you only want to be uh, on site or online this is something that's going to happen during the the process okay and then, for instance, imagine you want to come physically because that's what you prefer and, it, and usually that's the best, right? But there is not enough funding for all those who would like to come. Then maybe clarify whether you'd also accept to, to, to do the online part. I think that's also an issue. I think it's an important question. Maybe we could ask, in fact, Christina, because she came from Serbia. So 
Um, uh, can she tell us, for instance, uh, for instance, how much the IGC, if the IGC contributed everything, part of it? I, I don't know. It's I really don't know. So it's uh, maybe it's the wrong question. Maybe. <laughs> maybe uh, no, but uh, I, I also think that Patricia uh, is the one who should address that question because, yeah, for me, everything was covered, both accommodation and travel expenses. And uh, I just had to pay my expenses here. Okay. Yeah. I do know. For, for example, I, to compare it to Serbian standards, the prices here are not much higher, so it's not so expensive to, to live here. But yes, just to complement that, it's just it's how it works. I mean, we we take care of the travel, you know, we organize the training office after Christina was selected. Uh, organized she wasn't the only one by the way you know there was there was another girl who came from spain she came by coach so we organized the tickets we paid for the tickets and we found accommodation uh nearby and all the other expenses are supported by um candidates coming in on a, in other words on a daily basis then people you know just uh, just manage themselves yeah, I was asking that because uh, I was with Anaranda in the other session and she said that depending on the lab, they might not have the funding to um, cover the whole accommodation. And although I study in Lisbon, I don't reside there during summer. And if I got selected, I wouldn't be able to stay in Lisbon during the, the internship. It's like uh, Luna said, just apply. And if you need to, you just specify that. And then, you know, we decide based on the distance, the other candidates as well, you know, it depends. Like I said, you know, we have a fixed uh, budget per candidate. So, you know, uh, we make it, we try to make it possible for everybody to come. It hasn't been the case that that hasn't happened, you know, so far. Of course, if you're coming from India and, you know, you, the budget goes through the roof, then maybe you'd have to provide, maybe you have to complement that or it's just not possible. But we do try to accommodate everything. So. Okay, thanks. Okay, short message, don't go to India. <laughs> There are two there are two questions uh, in the chat box. Luna, do you want to have a look or? Uh, uh, I don't know why I, I I've lost something. I can't see everything in the. Uh, okay. I'm losing part of the information. Ah, uh, chat now. I can see. Uh, what is that? I'm not sure. Selection so, criteria is one of them. No, which are the selection criteria? How can it be judged? I mean. Uh, Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll say a little bit about last year and this year will be more or less the same, I think, but the, the final word is then for the committee to decide. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody, the reason why I said about the no CVs is because we, everybody uh, applies via the platform and the platform is uniform. Um, the, the select, if there is a score, they, all your applications will be read by if you know by the if primarily by the PIs who you will be applying to the labs of so you apply to the lab the PI will read uh, everybody who will apply to those to his or her um, lab um, and there is a there is a fixed uh, there is a, a selection criteria for them and everybody afterwards everybody will be also um, the, the numbers and the, each person will be uh, reviewed by the committee. Um, like I said, I think you just, you know, we're not expecting you to submit lots of, um, I don't know, pres oral presentations or publications. That's not the idea. You really need to think about what, what makes you, you know, what, why do you think biology is important to you? And if not biology, maths or physics or whatever, how do you uh, relate the what the summer school can offer to your to your future and just you know articulate that in the in the motivation letter and in the other in the other um, uh, boxes there are there there's things to do with obviously there are hobbies there's you know the usual that you would have in your cv but uh but it's uh that's how that's how it works uh, specifically um yeah, may I ask something? So I've never, that's my first year, okay? So I don't have experience on how the selection happened last time. What I should say is that you have to remember, most of you are, I mean, young, you don't have so much experience. So imagine uh, that if you compare students, one has, 
one student has had the chance to do an internship and pretty much no other because that's rare at that age. Then why would we think that student is better just because that's stochastic, that's not. So this is why we try to avoid these kind of things. Another issue is that different countries give marks that are just not on the same scale. There are countries that have very high marks Everybody has very high marks. Other countries where very few have very high marks, it's impossible to compare these things. So this is why we want to know what kind of person you are, whether you're complementary. And if I may, uh, uh, when you are not from a, a, let's say, scientific background in your family, your all these things, you don't know exactly what it is to, to write a reference, okay? But this is really crucial at this stage, at that stage. You have to learn. And this is not, don't go on websites that tell you how to work for a bank. That's not the right kind of letter. But try to find in your university people who can reread your letter. Don't think that you know, you don't know. It's so difficult to write a proper letter. Try to really explain who you are, what you will gain, but also what you will bring, what you think you will bring, but don't just do it. Think about it, reread it, show it to somebody who has more experience it's really important okay even if you are not selected you will have learned something okay i hope <laughs> i hope you understand i think it's important because I, I when i was your age i would never have been able to write a reference letter uh, an application letter i mean if i had looked today at my letters i would never have taken my okay so really if i may jump in regarding that uh, I actually first applied in my first year of undergraduate and I sent so so bad uh, application letter <laughs> that of course <laughs> no one considered it but in second year I applied again I was really stubborn one just to finally arrive here in my third year so yeah basically in my first year I ne never asked anyone to look at my application letter and it was awful <laughs> okay there is another question thank you there is another question, which is, do we apply to a specific project? Or do we apply to the summer school itself and then choose a project? Maybe Patricia, you want to, to say something, you know better how it has been uh, going before? So yes, um, the, the correct answer is really, you do apply to a specific project because if you are interested in the labs, you have to choose two. You will only get into one. I mean, the platform actually offers you two choices from all the, projects and labs that are listed on the website. Um, so you need to have a look at the website whilst you're filling in your application just to see what projects are available. Um, so there is no such thing as just applying to the summer school. You have to decide whether you want seminars only, which will be the first week, uh, in that case, online only, or if you want to try and uh, um, be uh, at the seminars as well as the labs, and in that case, you have to choose a project. You you have you give a choice of two, and you uh, you you get one. Uh, maybe to clarify, how uh, how many can they choose? Because the idea for them maybe to understand. Because imagine that ten students want to go in lab project number one. This lab can only take one student, okay? So if you all choose that and you do not provide a second choice, it's very unlikely uh, to be selected because uh, there are just too many students. It will be random, okay? No, but you and have to, you really have to choose. If you choose labs, the platform doesn't allow you to just choose one. You can choose ah. twice the same, but it doesn't, it like that's that's where what uh, what Lunas is saying, it won't help you very much because you might not be accepted to that one and maybe you could be accepted to your second one. Okay, so yeah. uh, that was the question. So and sorry, uh, do we, no, no, go ahead, go ahead, Patricia. No, there's another question, but it's exactly. directed to I'm Sophia going... and Christine. Ah, okay, I'm afraid my lack of love experience can be on the way. Sophia and Christina, how do you, you, did you feel about the lab work? Did you feel that the experience you had on your university was enough? Ah, important one. So, so Sophia and Christine, ah. Yeah, uh, actually that's a question very, I felt the same. I had the same doubt before going into the summer school, exactly the same because uh, a medical university that doesn't have that much lab experience. So uh, obviously I had some previous lab experience, but I didn't know much about how to be in the lab. And 
everyone there and my supervising and everyone at my lab was very welcoming and taught me everything they they obviously you, you need you 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 can't have you can't be afraid of saying you don't know you need to to be able to say you don't know and everyone is very welcoming and very very open to teach you everything and my first week was quite overwhelming as i was learning everything and a lot of a lot of things i needed to work to learn how to work with the microscope i needed to learn how to work in this with the cells how to maintain asepsia how to fix the cells how to uh, do immunofluorescence i learned everything in that first or first first two weeks and by the end i was doing everything on my own it it was i learned a lot but don't be afraid it, it doesn't go in the way uh, everyone no one is expecting at this stage that you know how to work in the lab by yourself no one is expecting that and everyone is there to teach you so don't be afraid to apply if that's your concern and everyone will be will be open to teach you everything believe me yes so i, I guess that's is what i have learned but christina do you want to add anything no i completely agree and just want to add that uh, i worked with drosophila with fruit flies so basically on the university you never learn anything about handling flies so it doesn't really matter your previous lab experience when you when you come here you you're, you'll probably start doing something completely new so everyone would be at the same stage as you like there wouldn't be anyone who is more experienced than you okay um i think there was another question for those who didn't read it uh which was uh so two is the maximum number of lab projects we can apply to and patrice answered yes so in case we were not clear before two maximum on the platform that is when you will go to the platform it's clear you will see. okay then there was uh so okay the list at the bottom page okay for lab experience that does lab classes during my degree count I've just noticed the data as well. So it's not a matter of counting so much. Of course, you know, yeah, exactly. if you have it, please. Yeah. <laughs> it, exactly. I understand how a lot of our university systems are always about counting how many kilograms of math did you do, how many liters of physics. And sometimes there is a moment you see, okay, but Okay, you may have had 20 kilograms of math, but you still cannot draw a line, okay, a mathematical line. So question is really a lot will be in this letter. This is why it's important that you show that you try to be as a uh, Christina, you're just honest. And uh, if you're a bit ingenious, whatever, maybe it will not work this year, it will work next year, you know, that's um, but uh, if you have experience and you feel that you can explain it. Even a little experience, if you explain it well, it gives the impression that you master the ideas. And that gives the feeling that you know much more and, and it's really, and then you will learn, you're ready to learn. So I think you have to account for that. Okay. Uh, just, just a reminder, uh, there are also facilities, not necessarily labs that you can apply to on the list and there are theory projects. I don't know, Lunes, if you want to talk about that because there's a, uh, is topatology is topatology units facilities right and also there are a couple of um i mean we did have um two people that came from maths last year that that were in uh you know in other facilities not just labs just to add you know to to the choice okay I'll, I'll go. So this is so we've explained a bit this general structure. So either you try to come just for that week and then uh, you don't want to do an internship and that's online. And then you want to come for an internship. There, so there will be that one week physical presence plus the internship. The mornings will be devoted to people who are locally here. They will be doing different types of activities. So, for instance, you see a picture. On, I think you still can see my slide, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so you can see here it's um, uh, how do you call it? Um, sea oh urchin. Mm, a sea urchin, exactly. So it's a sea urchin because there will be one morning in which, which has been organized by Anna Aranda, who's a marine biologist, 
where they will, will take the students, go to do some sampling of sea urchins, then come back and there will be different activities with different facilities uh, like genomics, uh, uh, microscopy, I think, and um, I'm not sure right now. I, I don't have the program in my head. Okay. So now going to uh, another slide. So as I was saying, these are some of the people involved, the PIs uh, involved. In fact, I was checking, there isn't uh, a picture of Marco who should be here. I think, or am I missing? But anyway, yeah. And, no, I'm not uh, about you. Can, you. You can post me on top of it. <laughs> Put a post it. Yeah, okay. The, okay. Now the objective is to find Marco on the picture. Whoever <laughs> finds, whoever finds him gain, uh, uh, gets a free internship. Uh, so these are uh, some of the PIs uh, who will be happy to welcome you. Um, then uh, PIs and heads of facilities. Again, I should say it clearly. Now, next, uh, if there are no questions on that, these are the. Okay, I don't know what you see and what you don't see. Maybe that. So you see there is there, the types of labs, as I was saying before, are quite diverse. So the first is like a regulation is from Monica Betancourt Diaz. She's the director of the IGC. That's the group where Sofia was. You can see here uh, evolution and development of the group of Elio Susena, which is where um, um, Christina was. And uh, so there are different groups from uh, ecology, genome, uh, maintenance and evolution. That's Marco. And maybe that's a good moment to ask maybe Marco to say a few words. Uh, I'll, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, I would like to comment and add uh, a couple of things upon what the other students have said. So I, I joined the IGC last summer. So last summer I was moving my first steps to the IGC. And one of the first uh, ex, you know, um, type of encounter I had in the, in the patio uh, were the, the students of the previous edition of the, of the, of the summer school, which I simply random, randomly met upon uh, coffee breaks or, uh, or uh, happy hours uh, during the summer and first of all i, I found them uh, really smart and engaged students uh, which seemed to have a, a fun time at the agc so that was part of the reason why this year i i was happy to uh, volunteer organizing the next year of the of the summer school because if that looked like a, a, a fun and interesting experience for them so if i can take part of the next edition i will be very happy and in, uh, as a part of my contribution, on, on top of uh, helping organizing the summer school, uh, I'm also uh, hosting uh, a student uh, in my lab. Um, and just to briefly give an example of the type of, of uh, project and experiments we are doing, I will just here describe very, very shortly, but you can write me afterwards if you're interested. So um, the lab is called Genome Maintenance and Evolution. So uh, the genome, uh, you may uh, know that is uh, defined as a sort of a genetic information that, uh, you know, uh, in a way contain the instruction to build an organism and to make it function. And this information is stored in chromosomes within the nucleus of your cells, for instance. And, you know, it's, it's a, you know, common knowledge that this genome needs to be preserved in time, right? Because if you accumulate too many mutations, uh, you can have diseases such as cancer or other genetic diseases. So these genomes need to be copied every time a cells divide and, uh, and passed to the next generations in a faithful way, right? Uh, well, but why is this not the full part of the story is that if, if the, this information will be copied, um, let's say extremely faithfully uh, with no error whatsoever, um, uh, then, you know, cells and organism will, wouldn't be able to evolve. So also you may have heard about how uh, evolution happens and uh, in order to evolution, for evolution to happen, you need errors, uh, mistakes uh, in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this process uh, that results in mutations which then can change the features of the organisms which are then selected by, by the environment uh, or not. Uh, but um, 
Well, so there is a balance, therefore, in how faithfully you uh, make copies of genomes and uh, how much organisms can, are able to adapt. And that's the type of arguments that we work on as a lab. And uh, we use a uh, very tiny organism, which is called uh, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is the scientific, scientific name of the budding yeast, which is the, the little bug in the cellular organism, which ferments and makes things such as bread, beer, and uh, lots of good things. Uh, but on top of that, um, it's advantageous to work with because it grows very fast. So we can, we can study evolution because uh, simply yeast can, you know, divide many times just over 24 hours and therefore give like many generations in a short period of time. And also it has a tiny genome that we can analyze very easily. And uh, the project that uh, we will play with this summer with the student is to uh, look at mutation rates. So uh, cells uh, have, by mutation rates, we define the number of mutations which you know, without perturbation are introduced into the genome uh, in an organism. And usually this is a number which is, is attributed to usually a species specific number. But uh, recent finding have suggested that maybe the environmental condition are able to, you know, to tune these mutation rates. So we're going to test uh, this hypothesis uh, using budding yeast in our lab. I don't know if this is a, a, a decent introduction. Or, uh, sorry, I didn't prepare any slide uh, about it, uh, but I hope my words have described uh, enough what we're going to do. Otherwise, you can always write me. I think it's a very indecent proposal, as a famous movie said. Beautiful. <laughs> I, mean, that's... Are, I don't want to divide like a budding yeast in your lab, but anyway, uh, I'm sure, I mean, these questions are, are really interesting about this evolution, maintenance of genomes and so on. But again, not everything, I mean, you will see the different types of projects. Uh, um, I don't know if there are more questions uh, I'm a bit losing track. Can I actually ask a question on the on Marco's lab? Sorry? Absolutely. Uh, yes. So uh, I study microbiology and I've learned that in bacteria we have these uh, the increase of mutators when they compete amongst each other just because they are co uh, co surviving or coexisting. Does this happen in uh, fungi as well? Exactly, yes. In, uh, in particularly strong uh, selecting environment, uh, oftentimes uh, strains which have an increased mutation rate tend to ar arise because they, by having an increased mutation rate, they find a, a solution to the challenge that you are imposing to them faster. And therefore, these tend to be uh, advantaged, yes. And, and are those mutations also usually in the DNA repair system or they are focused in other systems? Uh, usually they affect either the replicative polymerases, so how the um, uh, errors are detected by the polymerases themselves or DNA repair systems. Okay. The mechanisms are similar, they are just uh, you know, slightly different because uh, compared to bacteria, yeast is a, is a eukaryotic cell, uh, so the machinery is slightly different. But very similar dynamics. Okay. So, um, so this is just, uh, I was, as I was saying, I'm going through these slides uh, so that we can stop on any of them, go back if there are questions. And uh, after this one, so there is the technical details, which go back to a number of the things uh, that we discussed already, the fact that, for instance, you can see chose choice of up to two IGC labs. There is the platform where you can do. There is no CV to be added in any particular format except by answering the questions that appear on the form. Uh, there will be fellowships to some extent. Uh, and I think that's written here. And don't forget the deadline. And remember, you probably noticed there are two different deadlines for the summer school and the IBB PhD project. If there are people who also have been moving out and going to the PhD, there's different deadlines, okay? This one is 31st of March. 
I don't know if there is a time, if it's like midnight or, or five o'clock. It's really that. Okay, so it means that, remember, it's midnight in Portugal. Yes, and it's automatic. So, you know, the platform just closes down at 2359. <laughs> can, can, can they, uh, sorry, can they, um, Save what they're doing while they're doing it, like save the form and come back to it. Yes, yeah, yeah that's, that's uh, all the instructions are there, and it's possible to do that. You just save the form. You only want to submit it, it, that's it, it's submitted. But you can also just leave it there and maybe in a couple of days come back to it and improve or add or whatever, uh, as long as you don't submit it. Yeah. yeah um, uh, that's the important, that's an important practical one. Okay. Yes. Don't forget, you have to, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm just saying this for most of you uh, who are Portuguese. If you submit the, the application in Portuguese, it will automatically be put aside. It is in English. The official language in I IGC is English. It's written all over the place. I did receive a few um, submissions last year in Portuguese. They're not even read. All the other ones are read. So please remember to to submit everything in English, okay? And yeah, it, it, it actually uh, reminds me because it's true that at the very beginning of the first session, the language issue was at some point uh, given when, when Anna was presenting, was saying that something was only in Portuguese. And he said, it's a bit uh, that we're sorry or it's a shame or whatever. It's, it should be clear at the IGC, everybody, from the canteen to the security, everybody speaks English, okay? It doesn't mean they always speak English. For instance, if there are Italians, they speak Italian between them. From, <laughs> if there are French, they speak French between them. And that does happen a lot. But, or Germans, or uh, people from Bangladesh, or people from India, when there are several of them, they can. But the general language is English our English, which means with all, all its accents, diversity, and everything. So welcome, bring more diversity of your English, okay? Wherever you come from. Uh, good afternoon, I have a question, can I? Yes, of course. Um, if we apply to the summer school, which, it, which would include the seminars and the internship, and for instance, we are not selected, can we still be, are we still able to be selected for the seminar week only? Short or answer. only if we yes. apply only for the seminars? No, no, short answer is yes. Um, like I said before, all, your, uh, all the valid applications will be read first and foremost by the lab that you're applying to, but they will also be read by or the committee and there will be a clear score so of course i mean just to give you an idea last year we had 240 uh applications and we only gave we were only able to uh make eight places available and 30 places available for online uh everybody that were at the online classes except for one person had chosen labs there was only one person who only had chosen labs who only had chosen online, sorry, and he was in Colombia, so that's why he didn't choose, you know, he couldn't even come to a lab because with the, all the COVID restrictions was impossible. He was the only person who was there that had only chosen seminars. Everybody else, uh, you know, at the end of the score, it will be given, he or she will be given a, a place um, in the seminars. Every single place that is, uh, uh, that is given will be confirmed so you can also decide when we offer you the place you can also decide if you don't want to just be at the seminars because you couldn't get into the labs you can also just uh, refuse it and your place will be given to the next person so, okay thank you so much thank you it's a good question in fact it's an important practical one otherwise people may feel like i prefer to apply just online because then otherwise i, I might lose everything it's a good point Yes, exactly. Thank you. Yeah, good point. I had a question about Isabel, Isabel's word or lab, uh, because in the last, in the past years, her lab has been a practical one, but this year it says it will be a theoretical one. What does, how will that go? 
uh, well, that direction. <laughs> it's really uh, uh, Isabel Gordon's lab. So there's evolution, experimental evolution, okay? And uh, uh, this year she does not have people uh, who can take a student for the experimental part. So she really made it very clear. I said, I'm happy to help and have a student, but I don't have the means to host a lab student. It's just not possible. It has to be somebody who's interested in running simulations and doing. Remember, it does not mean that you are a programmer or whatever. Right? Remember, it's an internship. Nobody expects you to know. You know, it's the same way. If you have never done lab, you can go to a lab. If you have never done uh, theory, you can still do a, a theoretical project if you're interested in, right? So you're saying simulations, is that systems biology? Uh, well, I don't know systems it's, biology. It's the, those softwares where you introduce a new pathway on the organisms. No, uh, okay. no, no, no. I think, I don't know. You know, you'd I mean, I don't know her project, okay? Yeah. She, because currently we asked people to say, are they available to host a student? Can they give not a specific project, but sufficiently large and specific that it can be better defined later? Because imagine it's super specific, uh, like uh, it will be molecule X in cell W, whatever. Who's going to be so interested? So they gave a general project but they, they will only go to the specifics later, okay? So what I can tell you is that Isabel Gordo is a population geneticist by training as well. She's a physicist originally, she does population genetics and she does the, all these evolution uh, stories. So I don't know if her project is about the evolution of uh, the microbiota or the uh, selection of bacteria, I don't know, okay? Uh, other questions? Um, I don't know uh, if in the chat. No, no, no chat. Okay. Uh, I mean, if we have answered pretty much all questions, we don't have to force you to wait 40 more minutes. Uh, no, 20. It's, uh, I don't know. I'm going to ask people one by one. Beatrice Moital. So, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. And you? I'm very well. <laughs> <laughs> so any question you're okay things clear uh, yes i think the questions that were previously asked um uh, explain me so don't yes. be shy. Yeah, good thank you for answering <laughs> how about you tomas lives in you beautiful hair a beautiful uh, head uh, set <laughs> thank you very much i uh i had some questions but uh, someone got to there before I did, oh, so I'm I'm good. So, so they scooped you. It's like science. You could have published it. <laughs> eh, it was. No, uh, no. They were faster than me. <laughs> I, uh, but I I I think I pretty much understand everything about okay. the summer school program. So yeah, I'm that's good. Cool. okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So I'm checking other people who are hiding and we don't see their, so for instance, uh, I hope I don't say it badly, Bojana or Bojana Shanichijevic. Ah, no, yes? Yes, I'm here, hi. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's <Hello>. Bojana. <laughs> huh? It's Bojana, not Bojana, um, Bojana. <laughs> Bojana. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I also had some questions about accommodation, but it was pretty much answered. I don't know, maybe about, what about the food? <laughs> uh, well, I hope I can come to Portugal so I can taste it myself. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, now the food is very good, okay? As uh, George was showing, uh, we have a great uh, kitchen <laughs> and group uh, cooking for us, so you will see. So, but, uh, uh, also, I wanted to ask, uh, um, what is the process with visas for coming to Portugal? I think that currently most countries in, uh, are, uh, if you are vaccinated, if you are vaccinated, I think that now most countries, well, not most, I don't know, you have to check, okay? But I think that many countries now allow you to travel without positive tests. At least, I think Portugal is, is in that case. Check. I, 
Oh, okay. I'm from Serbia. I'm the same university as Christina, so. So that should be okay. Maybe you should ask her. But last year, I think you, <laughs> last uh, last year, I think you had some uh, arrangement that was coming into force that hadn't been in place yet. Some different sort of visa. Uh, I don't think it was a big deal because I did call the embassy and uh, they would sort it out if there was a need to do it. So you shouldn't have a problem. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too worried because things are really improving and uh, there are some countries that are closed, but I don't think Portugal is and they're really improved. So fingers crossed. Uh, so, okay, I'm going to randomly select somebody else from who doesn't have their... Uh, I, I just had a, a specific uh, question uh, counting uh, the COVID question. Who, who is asking? Because, uh, I Carolina, feel... because I had COVID like three weeks ago, and so I'm only going to take the third dose five months from now. Will that be a problem for me if I want to apply? Uh, uh. I mean, I, I'm not, you know, I, as you can imagine, I'm not deciding the rules, but yeah. my, my understanding is that if you were sick and you got, in fact, uh, the positive PCR yeah. test and everything, what you got from the SNS here in Portugal, you yes, I have the, the you have recovery. The recovery and the recovery actually gives you six months in on top. But in any case, I have been checking travel because I have to go to missions and so on recently. And in many places, they didn't ask for the third one. They asked for the two vaccines, for the, for the vaccine for which you need two doses. And you didn't have, in, in many places, you did not have to have um, even a positive or uh, I mean, negative test. <laughs> so you didn't have to have tests. So I'm not worried by that, OK? But okay. you know how the last two years and something have been. So whoever can predict the next six months, I mean, uh, I admire. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we have uh, somebody called uh, Lazar. Maybe questions from Lazar? Ah. Yes, no? Um, I would maybe ah. have uh, one question. Ah. Um, actually, two. Mm -hmm. Just uh, out of interest, you said that on the 31st of August, there will be these lab final presentations. Uh, how would that work? So every lab will present their findings and the research they have done in the four weeks uh, to all the other labs or all the the other seminar students or how will how will that work? Can you see my shared screen? Yeah, I can. I think this is exactly it. So what you have, you can see here on the right, you can see George Carneiro who is the person who talked about the PhD program. You have sitting there different PIs or students from last year. And you have a student here standing in front of a screen it's outside. Sophia. It's Sophia Lunes, she's here. Yeah. Ah, it's Sophia, I can't forget, you see? That's proof she, does, she didn't lie. And then we have Patricia <laughs> from the back. So Sophia, so Sophia maybe can explain how it happened then. Yes, of course. Uh, so in the end, I believe we had 15 minutes. I'm not sure if it was 15 or 20, but I believe it was 15 minutes to present what we had found and what we um, looked into during the previous months. It was mainly directed at towards other seminars, uh, other internship students and uh, the PIs that wanted to to watch and also all the IGC community actually could go there and 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 listen to our presentations. So it's something you prepare mostly on the last week as you don't have that much time and you need to, to do some research before you have some kind of results. And even if everything you do goes wrong, it's okay. What I believe the, the, the purpose of this presentation is for you to, to be exposed to talking to other people and to explain what you did. Uh, and more more important than the results is the process and what you learned and the activities you did. Uh, and in the end, everyone can can ask you questions about regarding what you what you looked into and what you try to understand. And I believe that's it. It's quite it's quite um, relaxed. It's not that uh, scary. <laughs> and it last year it went very well to everyone, I believe. Uh, I see, I see. 
Okay, thank yeah, you. And I think it's important to remember there is no diploma, there is no evaluation. That's absolutely not the objective of that. You know, the idea is just you you've discovered something and you want to share and explain in 15 minutes the things you did and what you learned and the others will do the same with you. So there's also, let me just mention something that we did specifically for these presentations. There was our, um, our institutional communication department uh, prepared a session, which is about science communication where you can you have the chance to go through what you want to present with one of one of um, one of their team and uh, one of their team members and uh, so that, that also helped structuring what or how and what to say to the rest of the of the people watching there was a slight limitation last year which we won't have this year because uh, it was only to do with technology so it was it um, we tried to get a have a hybrid format and at the time it didn't quite work and i, I believe now that's totally um, overcome uh, but like sphere said it was informal it was quite uh, good to have those people quite close to you they you know people do ask questions and it's just a chance to sort of build up on your confidence to be able to share results really okay so I just saw now that Lazar had answered me. Sorry, apologies, Lazar. I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't see the chat. Uh, so I think we're done. I mean, unless there are more questions, I can see that a number of the students are gone, which I understand them. <laughs> so, I mean, we've done what we had to do. We tried to present, and I hope we answered all of your questions. Uh, do speak about this to your colleagues, whether you want to come or not. And. Uh, Patricia, if we maybe we should join back, uh, I don't know, Marco, uh, maybe if you want to say, add something in relation to all that. Otherwise, we could uh, sort of uh, go back to the main room, right? I'm not sure how you do that. Though. No, I think, no, I think we could just finish. In fact, we. If I stop sharing. Uh, that's it, right? No more. I think we. Yes. I think you could just we can actually Lazar has a question at the chat and I think it will ah. be pretty useful. My last one quick ah no questions. Ah one question actually. <laughs> can we get emails of past participants in case we have more questions later so we uh, can ask them? So I will okay. ask the, so, I can't uh, I can I answer that very quickly. I can't provide any emails unless people give me uh, authorization for it. So you can ask Sophia if she can give you that, or Kate, or Katerina if she's still around. Christina did leave me her email, so I will copy and paste it in the chat right now. And she did say, because she had to leave, she did say I could share it. Uh, other than that, uh, there's a whole, you know, uh, policy on not being able to share other people's emails which we can't really get around, I'm afraid. Patricia, I'm more than okay with that. I will leave my email in the chat and if you want, you can okay, just- Okay, do that if you, if you can, please. Yeah, me as well. Okay. Okay, cool. I yeah, hope- this... uh... I think we can go back to our uh, ah, leave room. Exactly. I think that's okay. How I'm, just, it is, I'm right? just going to give a few more seconds if you want to just copy that email, everybody. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because yes, they will be unavailable as soon as I uh, stop the recording. I just wanted yes. to make sure uh, Christina was the one that went to Luis Teixeira's lab, right? So Christina went to El, uh, Elio's lab. Elio oh, Christina. Okay. Katarina could not come physically, I, as I understand, right, Katarina? Yeah. Okay. And, and Sophia was in the group of uh, Monica Betancourt Dias. Whereas, uh, mm. okay? Yeah, thanks. Okay, if you were asking about Luis Teixeira, I believe last year no one went to his lab. We didn't have oh. them. Uh, it wasn't available for choosing, no. Okay. This year he has two projects. And I highly recommend. Okay, so. Is that okay for whoever wanted to copy emails? Can we leave?
and uh, it's, I mean, okay, close. So, so thank you very oh, much. Cool thank you, Lazar. Good luck to all. Uh, see you maybe in the main room. I think we have to leave that room and uh, yes. maybe we can see each other in the main room and see if there is a message from uh, from Anna Aranda. But of course, you're all free to just leave. And uh, I think we can leave actually because Anna just sent me a message saying we could finish in two minutes, in fact. So, okay. so I'm leaving the room and in case there is uh, uh, somebody else in the main room and then I'll leave. So bye bye to everybody. Thanks for Thank coming. You. Thanks to the, the, the alumni, Sofia, Katarina, and Christina, and, uh, and thanks for the others. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. So, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks, Marco. Thanks, Patricia. So how shall we start this? Do you, you guys want to start asking questions, or let me just introduce you? You can see Romana, and you can see Katia. And they are PhD students that were recruited in 2019. They are part of the IDB. Okay. And uh, Katia is Portuguese. Uh, Romana comes from Cuba after several places uh, from South Africa and so on. So she has been all around the world. Uh, actually, I. Sorry. Yeah, go. Okay. Uh, I, I have a, a simple question uh, regarding the PhDs. Just, um, I know there are two or three main stages of the PhD, but uh, I just would like to know how's the daily routine of a PhD student? Like, um, yeah, I, I think that, that's a question, a question for Cathy or Romana. You want to go first, Romana? Or, I mean, yeah, uh, I can go first. Well, it depends um, a lot on each student, but basically during classes. Um, so during the first six months of your of the PhD program, you go every day to the institute and you have different classes. Every week is completely different, um, and you're exposed to a lot of uh, fields in biology. And then when you choose your project, then uh, then it's really different from PhD to PhD. Um, my daily routine is if I have experiments, like I normally go from 10 till six. Um, if I don't have experiments, I might stay home working on the computer or go to the library because the IGC has an amazing library where you can focus. Um, and yeah, but there are other students that have different projects, so they might go on the weekends as well. I don't know if that answers your question. I'll pass on for Katia. Yeah, I, I think Romana basically summed it up. So the first six months are the best that you can get out of the PhD because you're just learning, basically. And you come and you're with your classmates and you listen to a lot of different science. And it's really interesting because you get to meet all of these big shots from different fields. Even if you don't even care about it, it's, it's nice to meet all of these different people. And you come and it's basically usually from nine to six, but then you have some group work. So maybe you have to work with your colleagues also outside of schedule. But um, the first six months are really to get to know the IGC, to get to know the people. And it's, it's a really nice time. Then you go to the lab and it, it depends a lot on the relationship that you build with your supervisor and uh, how much you want him to follow you through every step or how much you say, I, I'd rather be independent. It's a relationship that you have to build and figure out. And depending on this, then you can make your own schedule. So I, I do longer hours than Romana, but because I'm from Portugal, sometimes I take Friday off to be able to go for longer weekends in my parents' house. So we don't really have a schedule, which is nice because then you can adapt yourself. And at the end of the day, it just matters that you do your work and you have something to discuss and you do your science. But yeah. Can, can I add something? Because none of them mentioned something on the six months of courses, which is actually one of the main objectives that we do is not only that they meet all these fantastic invited researchers that come here and so on, 
but it's actually to create a team, okay? They actually suffer a lot from uh, with classes every day, it's changing the subjects every time, people asking written reports or presentations on uh, a journal club of a paper on an area that they don't like, okay? But this says one thing, which is actually is not building character, but build a team, okay? And in the end of these six months, they are a team. And then they, as a team, they join the big team of the IGC. So the whole thing is planned. The, so the apparent torture uh, in, the, in the classes of the intensity and so on, it's actually, it's intentional, actually. We do it on purpose, such that it creates a team that has shared all that, okay? And the cool thing is that in the end of the six months, they can speak any researcher at IGC or, or in beyond on any subject. And that's something that we are very proud of our students, okay? Which is rare if you go and do, uh, I don't know, I don't want to mention our competitors, but then you learn a, a small domain of biology. We don't do that here. It's more fun and more broad, okay? Of course, then once you start doing your, your actual research, then you, spe you specialize, okay? You see what I mean? But during the classes and the whole environment is very interdisciplinary. And it might, not, um, Sorry, I'm gonna go. <laughs> it might not have anything to do with the question, but I just wanted to follow up on George's comment. Um, that's exactly what uh, called my attention to the IBB program, because being new in Portugal and looking for a research institute, um, I really wanted to get exposed to all the fields possible. And I wanted to get to know like all the possible projects that I could do. And also I was very curious to not learn only about one specific topic. I wanted to know everything. So that's why I applied for the IBB because um, you have these six months, of course, of, uh, of the courses and you, you get exposed to really cool research and researchers and only then you choose a project. So that was like perfect for my situation. And yeah, I wanted to share that with you. And picking up on something else that Josh said, these six months of classes, you, you are with your classmates and you do build a, a huge um, friendship and a basis to go on throughout your whole PhDs. You might go into different labs, but you still communicate a lot with your classmates and even with younger classmates, which is something I, I was in, in different research institutes in Portugal already and outside of Portugal. And, and I've never seen this and I've never lived this. And it's really nice because then you might not feel so comfortable to talk to someone superior to you, but you can talk to your classmates and discuss something. And, and it, it really creates a good environment. It makes you feel at home, like Josh said. It's the whole, P whole IGC and not just you doing your PhD. You see immediately how manipulative we are because we actually create this hub and the cluster, which is the, the group uh, of the six months. And then each one goes to a lab where they create very intimate relationships within that lab and within the neighboring labs and so on. But the whole thing uh, is a, a social experiment of connecting everyone to everyone that actually works, which is a magical thing not in the Harry Potter sense. Okay. Questions? Don't be shy. Anna Carolina, I see that you have questions. You're rolling your eyes and saying, mm. so go on. No, I don't have any first question in particular. I, I just... Um, I uh, want to know more about the PhD program as I am a master's student now from mm -hmm. um, Evolutionary and uh, Developmental Biology. And uh, Elius master, fantastic. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I, I didn't know about uh, the first year, actually six months, but I didn't know. Uh, and I was in doubt about, but because I don't know what I would like to do in the PhD, so. So apply. apply. <laughs> I do, I will do. We have a, a very long tradition of recruiting in your master. Yeah. Not in the last two years, unfortunately. I don't understand why. But, um... 
maybe okay. it, could, it could change this this year or next year. I hope so. <laughs> Come on, don't be shy. Let's go on the Camila. You already started, but any more question? Um, no, not really. I, as Anna, I'm also a master's student mm -hmm. in physics, uh, but I also like life sciences, um, and I'm actually doing um, a little project this year with uh, uh, Pablo, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm enjoying a lot the IGC life, and the IGC life not that much because it's all online, yeah. but I'm enjoying the, the work, and I might apply next year. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. We we like physicists, so tell your colleagues from the <laughs> yes, I, I do, I do. And particularly because you know, physics is a little bit exhausted, and uh, biology is the interesting thing at the moment. So that's what physicists should be doing. Yes, I agree. I agree, and it's more beautiful in my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> yes. How do you pronounce your name, Waskal? That's the name that we see. Uh, good, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hey, my name is Maman Aruna. Waskal is the program in which I'm running okay. my master's. I'm <laughs> just, I, just finished, I just finished the master's, just one more. So I have my degree just right now in marine science. Mm -hmm. So I'm in Cabo Verde but I'm from Niger. It's a program, West African countries program. From each country, one student is coming. So I come from Niger, mm -hmm. West Africa. So, but uh, on my thesis, I did something related to biology, but not too deep, not so deep in biology. I did, like, I work on mesopelagic organism in the, in the in water, ocean water column. My project was about the migration related to marine ecology. As well, mm -hmm. but uh, um, I didn't go so deep far in biology, so I don't know if someone like me could uh, apply to this kind of program. I, I found it very interesting, but I don't know if my skills and can allow me. Apply it's open, then, it, then it we'll we'll discuss it. Like me, the, the if the so the I, I will use that question to say to everybody, which is if you have any doubts of applying, just apply. Then, then we'll go over your CV and see what you have done and, uh, and uh, eventually invite you for an interview and then talk to you uh, to see if, uh, if this is what you want. We don't want people to come here with a mistake, okay? okay. <laughs> we'll actually spend a lot of time talking to you uh, in the interviews and so on to understand that this is the place for you and for what you want to do in the long run. Okay, so okay. do apply. I will try. Thank you very much. Thank and much. Uh, if I can add something, I, I was from immunology, but the sense that I got out of the class is that you don't need to know everything. You don't even need to know the field of the research that you want to do your PhD in because you have six months of classes and then you have all of these people to talk to. So you have time, even if your background, you think it's not perfect for the PhD program you can just be the right option because you're thinking outside of the box and they don't choose people because they did the right masters they did the right bachelors they did the right master thesis they choose people for their intentions and for what they see in their character and that's why the interview is also so important so there's i don't think there's a wrong masters to apply to this phd program i think but that's my opinion well, so that can correct me <laughs> actually it is in the announcement that if you have actually have studied anything that is not biology but you you feel that you are in the century of biology, apply. We'll we'll like to talk to you. <laughs> okay, okay, very nice. Okay. And uh, one thing, if you guys are considering a PhD, there is this idea that PhD is a big choice and that you are committed and this kind of stuff. First thing, a PhD is a long time. It's four years is a lifetime. So whatever you choose in the beginning, you can change. So for example, our students, they write their project six months into the into the phd and six months later they can actually rewrite it okay and it's part of the discovery of your own path okay and uh, we actually give you the conditions for that so that that's fine it's not you have plenty of time to, to do a phd the worst thing that you can do is to commit too much in in science in general because whatever you do in your phd 
most likely it will be completely outdated five years from then. Okay, and then uh, suddenly there is CRISPR, and suddenly there is. Uh, for, for a person like me, I remember when the first papers with the RNA interference, and I used to say, "Ah, oh, this must be a stupid epiphenomenon." Okay, because if it was a very relevant thing, we would already discovered it. No, it changed the world again. So, so science is always evolving, and so your PhD is just a stage which is not the most important thing is actually not what you are going to do, but uh, how you are going to, to deal with an open problem. Because doing science is like going into nowhere. It's the, it's the endless frontier, like a, a, a guy called Bush, not the dead Bush, but another Bush, the creator of the NIH said in the, in the 40s. Okay, it's the endless frontier. So we'll always be navigating into uncharted territory. So the PhD, whatever you do, the, your licenciatura, the master, the PhD, and so on, whatever you learn, which is not learning how to solve problems in general, may, might become useless. You see what I mean? Because suddenly there's a new world. Okay. Thank More you. questions. I got it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bruno, you want to ask something? Uh, hi. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, in, indeed, I, I think to, to ask something. Uh, first, introduce me. I'm a biologist from Brazil, and I'm working with developmental plasticity of the social behavior. Mm -hmm. And I'm applying now this year for the PhD. And uh, I, I found the the ABB PhD program, uh, searching researches that work in similar themes uh, that, that I work. So mm -hmm. I, I'm a big fan and I, I work, I, I like the work of the, the Rui Costa, mm -hmm. researcher Rui Costa. And I, I'm thinking, I like this, this structure of first we, we do the six months of the, the basic yeah, before before you continue you know that Rui Costa is no longer at IGC there it's is no a guy longer. called Rui Oliveira that is doing quite a lot of social plasticity and so on sorry I'm a little bit nervous I, no, it's fine. Don't, why are you nervous I should be nervous uh, you you don't have any reason to be nervous <laughs> I changed the name sorry <laughs> it's it's okay the, Rui Costa used to be a, a yes, yes. A uh, neurobiologist at the institute that that yes. has left. <laughs> it's the only thing. Yeah, it's not, don't don't worry. Don't worry. It's good. Uh, okay, but uh, I'm I'm thinking because this this structure where we 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 do first the all the the materials, all the subjects, and after we choose the the PI. I'm thinking about the, the availability of the, the PIs. So if I want to too much, uh, the research interests are the same with the real Oliveira, <laughs> but he, he cannot accept in the moment some students. Uh, how is the, the av availability of the well, PIs? Quite, quite frankly, that's always the problem that we have to face all the time. Okay, because because of the six months of unknown, actually, quite frankly, we don't know who will be the PIs that will be receiving students in uh, in February next year. Okay, uh, but this being said, you have seen that the IGC is very diverse. Okay, he disappeared. I think he lost internet. I was just looking for him. Yeah, just disappeared. Well, I'll keep saying it, and then because it's a general question, of course. The essentially the thing is so amongst all the, the the IGC researchers, you always find a match, okay. And the the most surprising thing is sometimes you you get with an idea like working with Rui, uh, like Bruno was saying, and in the end after three months you do a, you have a course from another lab. And then suddenly you say, oh, this is what I want to do, which is fine. And actually you go over this iteration a couple of times over the six months. And, uh, and in the end, we actually 
it, it sorts out. There's only one case, to my memory, in all these uh, 30 years or 20 years of uh, PhD programs that I've been witnessing, there was only one student that couldn't find his match at the Institute. And he wanted to do uh, game theory applied to evolutionary biology, the, you know, those kind of things, the cheaters, collaborators, and these kind of things. And uh, he tried to do it at IGC. We tried to come, uh, come up with something, but he was not feeling satisfied. And he ended up leaving and going and working with a person called uh, Kevin Foster. So we gave up the PhD and he left. And so in um, something like 400 PhD students at best by IGC, this was the example where there was no matching. And so I think it's fine. I think it's, uh, it's okay. Ines, you look, you look, mm, I'm not sure if I understood. There's a question from, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Pascal is the program. <laughs> Aruna, call me Aruna, it's easier. Good. Uh, hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can. Okay. I want to ask, for example, if someone is accepted in the program, so after the six month, now it will be like, for example, to go for the research, the data collection, and then the running the data and, and so and so. So uh, where will be the field work? He can come, he can choose anywhere he likes, or there is a specific area that you choose. But what what will, do you mean with field work? Because most of the research that, that, that we do, most of the research that we do here is actually not field work of ecology and this kind of stuff. The only person that does that uh, is Lunes. And uh, you, you might end up in Madagascar uh, because he studies all sorts of uh, little creatures in Madagascar. And you might end up there. But that's the only person that I know that does field work proper. This being said, if you need a collaboration, that's not an obstacle. Okay, it's just a question. It's just I want to know if maybe it will be only there or the person has to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Inej, you had a question. Come on. Yes, I have another question. Thank you. Uh, hello. hello. Uh, so we'll I'm go to uh... Inej in the end. Yes, Mauro, go on. Yes, uh, I have a question about uh, the uh, degree of freedom that the student have uh, in choosing or develop a project. Uh, I mean, uh, I search uh, uh, um, some of of the projects that are um, that are you doing in the in the EHDAE HGC. Mm -hmm. uh, but for example, if I want, I don't know, uh, do something crazy like uh, start to produce um, some kind of pigment from uh, some okay. I don't know some, something that is not already in your uh, okay uh, let me try to to answer that question because you know you have to come up with a project but it can't be completely orthogonal to the research yes. you okay. see obviously okay mm -hmm. so if you if you have something that you want to see a pigment let's say in the drosophila or in uh, the wings of a butterfly and that turns out to be something that you can convince a pi that is something that they should support then it's fine you see what i mean it has happened in the past the, those kind of crazy things Okay. I can give you a, an example of a, a student that came to work with me uh, from Brazil and he wanted to do, I'm a, theoret, a theoretician, so he wanted to do modeling, okay, but he went through the six months of courses and then in the end the questions that he had, so he decided, okay, I want to work with you, so okay, okay talk to my people, so I put him to talk with my lab and in the end there is one, one of his colleagues that tell him, man, your questions are experimental, they are not uh, uh, theoretical. Lab, but... You cannot solve that with mathematical models. You have to go and do things. So he was interested in, uh, let's say, the persistence of uh, the levels of uh, gene expression in, in cells. So he ended up convincing another PI that this was not his topic of research, 
to just uh, study that. And he did that together with me and it was fine. So it was a completely independent project. So those things happen, okay? You, you have to, uh, but you have to, to seduce the PI for the problem, not only to work with you, but to believe that the problem that you want to solve is relevant, okay? And, uh, and uh, has a high potential and that they want to de dedicate part of the resources of the lab to help you doing the project. This doesn't work 100% of the time. Most of the time you go to the lab, you propose something and they say, are you nuts? Look at this, this is a flawed reasoning. And, and that's actually why we give people six weeks or more to come up with a project because it involves the idea, the matchmaking with the, the resources available at the IGC and, and that's it. So you have, and you have those six months to understand what is possible and change your opinion of your initial idea that you wanted to study a pigment, for example, to study structured color. And then you go and talk with the physicist, then you go and start talking about those iridescent co colors of the flies that are not a pigment. You see what I mean? And it changes and it's, it's fine. It's just open-ended like science. <laughs> cool, cool, thank you. Bruno. Bruno is back, so. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Bruno? Oh, <laughs> sorry, uh, I, I am in a, a field work and the access to internet is kind of limited. So I disconnected, I listen only the, the beginning of the, the yeah. answer. So you were talking about uh, what happens if I, I want to work with Rui Oliveira and then Rui Oliveira cannot have students in the- Yes, yes. The truth is that during the six months of courses, quite often you change your opinion, okay? and you change your preferences. And uh, if there is a situation, I, I don't know of any case of, uh, at IGC where there was a student that were, wanted to work with the PI and that could not be solved. But uh, of course, it has to be something that is convincing, okay? You have to convince the PI that your ideas are good and that, uh, that he wants, as well as telling the model, that you have to convince the PI that the project is absolutely pertinent and it has high potential, that you are the guy to solve it and that the PI should put resources on you. See what I mean? Yes, I understand. It's, it's kind of, a, I don't know, an insecurity because uh, the, the research of Rui is very similar uh, to my research, but I understand that, that things change in the, in the way so, but I'm, I'm happy to know that uh, if I can sell my, my fish, I can, can work with anyone in any time. So you, you want to work with fish? Speaking about yes, fish? Yes, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm telling yeah, For the other so ones that don't know, he actually works on the fish. He studies social behavior with fish, okay? Zebra fish and... Uh, and also yes, yes. The, <laughs> these guys from Lake Tanganyika and so on, so. Yes, yes. But uh, thank you by, for the answer, by the way. Yeah. And uh, one of the objectives of the, um, of the six months of classes is actually to change your mind. Like a lot of people come with some ideas and you are exposed to so many fields and so many topics. And you might think you want specifically one topic and you find out, oh, this is actually super interesting. What if I do my PhD on that? And it happened to me, by the way. Bruno, it would not be unlikely that if, if you apply, if you get selected, and if you start going through the classes that uh, four months into the thing, you say, when you finally have the classes with, with who you'll say, this is all rubbish. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah, let's. I I'll go go to you, Waskal Software. But I really want to to hear from Ines. Sorry to to perturb you. But, uh, oh hi. Uh, I had a question, but it uh, actually ended up being answered uh, right now. But maybe we can discuss it a little more. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, uh, in a master student's perspective, if the six-month period actually changes your 
your interests and you ended up choosing something else because sometimes, and it's my case, I still feel a little bit lost in my preferences and uh, that uh, six month period seems really interesting to, to discover myself and to discover a scientific path. And I wanted to know your uh, uh, student uh, perspective on that. If you changed uh, your mind, if this was an, an important period for you in that sense. Nice. Um, so I went on something that I called PI Tinder because I started <laughs> uh, I started having meeting with meetings with PIs that I found interesting interesting and uh, with whom I would like to develop a project. Um, and because it's it's important to have a nice project, a project that you can identify yourself with, but it's also very important the relationship you build with your PI and also with the lab members and everything in general. So you have to like take a balance of all of that. So um, talking to different PIs was very important and uh, attending the classes as well, cause I could see their work, what they're interested in. And it changed my mind a lot. Like the first PI I, I was talking to, uh, we weren't a match because my research interests were not aligned with her research interests even though I really like the PI in the lab. Um, the same with the second one. And then finally, in the last week of classes, I had classes with my current PI. Um, so I work with plants, so it's Paula Duca. And I was fascinated with her lab and her research. And I was sure this is what I wanted to do. Um, and then I, I proposed a project, which was completely out uh, of what she's doing. Uh, she works with uh, splicing and proteins, and I wanted to know if splicing happens in the chloroplasts. Um, and she, she saw that I'm a very cell biologist while, while the lab is more on genetics. And then she proposed to me, what about post splicing, like beyond splicing? And uh, we came up with a very uh, cell biology oriented project, even though the lab is more of a plant genetics project um, lab. So yes, you can change your mind along the course multiple times. <laughs> course, I don't think you I want to have, add something. You also have the opposite example that's Katya that was interested in immunology and ended up picking one of the labs that does immunology, which is fine, okay? But I, I, I did talk to a lot of PIs, so it was not <laughs> like a straight coming to the IGC and knowing I would go for that person. I did talk to them, I saw what the projects were, I, I said what I would like to do. There was some that didn't align, some that did, so here I am still in immunology. But the classes do make you think, and one good thing about the classes and also about having George as a director is that they will push you to think are you making the right choice? Is this really what you want to do? And another thing is that they also support collaborations between laboratories. So this also helps you think about getting a middle ground between two things that you like, but are not fully aligned with uh, either one of the PIs. Then it's, I mean, it also falls on you because it's going to be more complicated. You're going to have two bosses, not just one, but it, it's also nice to have your own thing. So the classes can help you a lot in this. That you can get your own idea and you get to talk to people, you get to expose your ideas, hear their feedback, see if they accept it. And you do, I, I've, I know that someone wanted to go to immunology and now she's in uh, cell mechanics. So mm -hmm. that's very, very different. <laughs> and, and there was this year, there, there was this person that moved from immunology to, to cell mechanics. There was another one that had a completely clear view, a little bit like Bruno. Oh, I am, I am very interested in virology. So I want to work with the MJ and that's what I want. Oh, but could you consider? Yeah, I would consider, but not very enthusiastic. Three months into the program and she changed. She's still interested in virology, but that's not enough. You see what I mean? So if you are undecided, I think the program is fantastic for you. Okay. Because that's what we designed these six months for. Uh, for people that have a clear mind what what you want to do okay join us if if you have the merit to convince us that you are a good you are one of our potential peers we'll accept you and then we'll do our best to convince you that 
that's not a good choice, just for the principle that you have to have consider other options. If in the end you end up ending with the same PI that you started with, it's fine, okay? So we don't, we don't want to change you, okay? We just want you to, to give students the best opportunity. You see what I mean? So it's, it's fine. It's, uh, it's not, our program is not what you call that, a straight jacket that you have to follow rules, okay? So we are here to open you, to open opportunities. Thank you, by the way, for the, the answers. I'll, I'll keep nagging people. <laughs> yes, now we have people without cameras. Ah, yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, I have a question, but I don't know if it was covered in the first part of the session or not, because I had a bit of a problem with, uh, with public transportations coming back home. Uh, so I joined the meeting a bit later. So I just wanted to know how competitive is the application process for the PhD program? Okay, so, so it is something like, uh, we have something like 120 applicants, okay? We try to interview as many people as we can. That's my, uh, I, if I could interview 120 applicants, I would interview 120 applicants. So the maximum that we can do is actually 40 people, okay? So there is so there is a selection from 120 to 40. And then this year we are opening up to 10 fellowships, uh, 11 fellowships. I don't count filling them all, okay, quite frankly. But, uh, but that's the kind of competition that you have. So we'll, we'll essentially have a little bit less than 10% chance of getting in, okay. Thank you. Uh, I and, uh, think I have another way, question. This, this year we are going to try a crazy thing on the interviews. Typically, I wanted to, imp to improve the interview system. So this year, the candidates that get selected will be interviewed by two panels of three PIs and then by me after that. So you'll have something like half an hour uh, in a week. You'll have half an hour with a group of PIs, another half an hour with another group of PIs. And then the week after, you will have a uh, half an hour with me alone. And this will be to sort out all the, all the kind of things that sometimes we spend time discussing uh, curiosity of the candidates about the program that we end up using the, 20, the half an hour that we had before in the panel. Like this, I think it will be more appropriate and, uh, and gives, you, gives us multiple perspectives on the, on the person, okay? Yes, you were going to ask another thing. Yeah. Uh, do you also offer like PhD programs that you're just looking for the right candidate to take the project or is it just this type of project that we then have to develop an idea and look for the right PI to start our experiments? Can, can you repeat because I didn't understand very well. Uh, so uh, for example, I'm currently studying in the UK and basically lots of universities offer uh, a, P a PhD project and they're just looking for the right candidate yeah. to conduct the experiments. Uh, I was just wondering if the no, institute we, also offers that or not. No, we, we, we don't. That's not the scheme in which we work. So, so for example, you will be, the candidates are selected on their own merit and their own potential. And, uh, and they, they choose their project and they write their own project six months after the after the six months of, of classes okay so this being said so we are looking for the independence of the students so we give the students the opportunity to create their own projects sometimes there is people that don't manage quite frankly and uh, and they end up uh, adopting a project that is basically given by a pi okay but you have already been selected and uh, what is fun about that is basically that project given by the PI after one year typically has changed into what the student wants to do, most of the cases, okay? Uh, unless uh, the student and the PI are extremely aligned, but if they are not, there will be changes in the project. Okay, thank you. So more questions. Yeah, uh, it's not a question. I, I don't know if I need to 
to do this, but uh, goodbye because I need to go to work. So okay. I end early. Thank you for all. It's nice very interesting. Really. Bye. Bye bye. So, you guys are not uh, very talkative or not very curious. I have another question. Yes. Um, how, how difficult is it to, to develop a PhD project by your own or to come up with a, a cool idea to, to present to your PI? Because it seems really uh, like a big thing, a big thing to come up with. Uh, so I was wondering how, how difficult it was for you, the two students, how was your perspective on this? Mana, wanna go first? You can go first this time. <laughs> um, okay, uh, it's scary. It feels like you're swimming in the sea of nowhere and every question is like, oh, maybe this is too dumb because it already exists and I just didn't read about it. The good thing is, again, you have six months of classes, so you get exposed to a lot of uh, um, basic knowledge that people already know and has been published for forever and also unpublished data that scientists bring. So you don't start from scratch. You, you listen to a lot of things throughout these six months. And then um, one thing that you should try to do or what I tried to do is to talk to the person that you're interested in working with and ask them what are their expectations or what is the lab going to pursue now and see what you want to or what you like to do and then go back and think of something that you would like to propose and then you just need to keep on having this conversation you're not going to do everything from scratch by yourself or most likely i don't think you will it's a lot of uh, talking and there's no stupid question basically that's it you need to not be so afraid although it, it is scary or it was for me <laughs> Yeah. And uh, something that I found useful is to like um, come up with an idea, uh, regardless of how expensive it's going to be. Imagine you have like all the time in the world and all the money in the world. You don't. But this um, this helps you to come up with like ideas outside of the box. And then your PI will bring you down to earth and then will tell you, OK, this is possible or no, this is not possible. Um, and I think if you go with what uh, interests you or what sparkles your, your curiosity, that is a really good starting point. And then you just have to more or less align with what the lab um, is also doing and, and what their expertise is. And even if you don't, you can also collaborate. So at the end, it's like George was saying, the limit is your um, imagination. Um, and maybe I'm being a bit optimistic, but that's how I, how I took it. <laughs> also, actually, what you write in the beginning, it will change this is the, as soon as you start doing the experiments. Maybe what you thought you would find is actually completely wrong. And you get, you evolve a little bit of your project and it starts to become more and more your project the more you get into the field because you're starting from zero or from the outside and probably your PI knows more. But during the PhD, you're supposed to become the expert in that field. So you will you will write something in the beginning that will probably not resemble resemble at all what you wrote in the if for your uh, for your project proposal. But it will become your project throughout the years. And that is a good thing about the PhD project is that you can also change it. Here at the IGC, you can change what you're doing and people accept within the reason if you don't want to start cooking eggs in some weird way when you were supposed to be looking at immune cells I think they will accept it <laughs> and just to add one thing so you have to look at this as matchmaking of interests okay so you have to come up with a project but you also have to find a match within the PIs uh, PIGC the one or two if you are doing a collaborative work and it will never be your original idea alone or your, no, wait a second, I'm saying it's not the original idea, it's the first idea that came to you. Most of the time, your project will not be that. It will be restructured, re made more solid, more substantial with more potential. And in addition to the PIs that you are going to discuss, you will have me nagging you 
and, and the thesis community, because as soon as you have an idea of what you want to do, sometimes even without the PIs, we'll immediately start appointing you a pair of PIs that will help you, okay? And so during these six, think about what this is, is six weeks where you are designing your project and doing matchmaking, okay? So, so you have plenty of time and you have a whole community that will help you. You see what I mean? So it is scary, but more because of the open-ended possibilities rather than the thing. Because quite frankly, each PI, what will try to do you is, why don't you do this thing that I'm very interested in? And they will immediately give you a full-blown project, sometimes an ERC successful project, and say, why don't you do this? Okay, And, uh, and often the students, what they do, they'll take it and change it uh, into something that is overlapping with the interests of the PI, which is how it should be. You see what I mean? So it's not scary. Well, it is scary, but it's not, since every student does it every year, it's not a trabalhos de Hercules. It's not an Herculean task, okay? There is a person called Ermanda that I've not seen the face. And there's no doubt, no questions. Yes, but I'm here. I was uh, listening uh, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you don't actually, have questions? Actually, uh, I had like my vision clear. I, I wanted and I will apply for the IBB program. Uh, because uh, I also have been working for the IGC for uh, some months, mm -hmm. and that's that's why I was also part of this to know even more about the program. Cool. But um, so? I finished my studies for uh, mathematics and informatics engineering. I have mm -hmm. been working mostly. Uh, with data analysis, but mm -hmm. I also worked with uh, pneumococcus data, and now lately I'm also working uh, in metagenomics data. So I will try. <laughs> so who find... are you working with? <laughs> I'm working with uh, Elida Gini. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> give her my regards if you see her. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I met. I was with her today, so <laughs> okay. probably next day. We like mathematicians. Yeah. Cool. What else? There is another person here. Susanna. Hello. Hello. I'm from Serbia and I'm studying biophysics. I'm on my master's. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to ask what kind of funding is available for students and is it do they receive salary like regular salary or yeah. do they need additional funds okay. like scholarships okay so the the portuguese government contrary to some more advanced european countries uh, phd students uh, do not have working contracts okay they have fellowships okay okay so, but as soon as you get into, as you are admitted to the program, you get a guarantee, the fellowship, which is something like uh, 1,250 euros per month, plus a, a few, what we call fringe benefits. So, so everyone has a, a private health insurance. Uh, the, the, the food of the, of the institute in our canteen is very subsidized or very cheap uh, and uh, high quality, but you, you might ask the students. I think the salary, so, so the, the official salary in Portugal is a little bit over 100, uh, 1,100 euros. Uh, and the community of students is uh, always fighting to get a raise. And so they managed to get a raise something like uh, one year ago and they are fighting again again to get it you see the face of uh, uh, Katya uh, saying this and I think they will manage so but that's something that we, we are always here trying to make the life of people okay I think it's I think it's okay to live in Portugal 
uh, it's not like you are going to have a huge salary, okay? But uh, I've never seen students uh, that don't go to parties and don't, don't go to restaurants. So if they go to restaurants, that means that uh, there is money free. Also, the restaurants are cheap. So that's also high quality, uh, not very expensive restaurants. In general, in, it's, it's true, no? Katya? Am I, I lying? Said residencies. I was thinking which residencies you're yeah. talking about. No, restaurants are uh, okay. Restaurants are okay. So the apartments, because the Lisbon is now uh, the European San Francisco, there is a lot of tourists coming here, and that has uh, increased a little bit the price of, uh, of uh, rent. And that's one of the things that the student committee is actually asking okay, we need a raise because of the rent. And, and we listen to them. We always listen to them. So we are going to listen to them again. So it's, it's fine. I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, yes, you did. Thank you. Also, another thing that we do, we pay all the fees in university. You don't have to pay fees. Okay, they are all covered. So the, the whole thing is covered, all, all our PhD. Okay, okay, thank you. More questions. We have Carlotta that has not yet asked anything. Uh, hi, I'm sorry I can't turn on my camera. There's it's a fine. problem and I don't know why it isn't working. It's okay, don't worry. Uh, we can listen to you well. But I don't have any questions. The ones that I have were the same as uh, Raquel. So, and also uh, the same as Ines. So I guess everything's answered all of my doubts okay so you guys have no doubts about uh, how to apply and this kind of stuff you made a very clear presentation <laughs> <laughs> well maybe you can talk a little about that <laughs> about the, the application okay there's not not much thing so you have to apply online Okay, so, so at some point you have to enter the elements of your CV. It's not like you take your CV as a PDF and you upload it. You will just have to copy paste into our form the, the, the degrees and the experience, whatever. It's quite free, so you can put a lot of stuff. Feel free to do it. There is a motivation letter, and we take seriously the motivation letter. It's a half of the... The, it's almost the same weight as the as the CV itself, okay? And the remaining thing is, is just reference letters. So the reference letters, as you know, we, we don't ask you to upload the reference letters. You give the contact to people, and then we'll contact these people directly, okay? They will receive an automatic message. Speaking about that, if you are applying, as soon as you get the click your submission, your uh, reference, uh, your references will receive an automatic email. It so happens that sometimes this thing goes to the filter of spam, okay? And we cannot avoid that. So my recommendation is immediately send them a, a message saying you are going to receive a message from this address, which is IBB at IGC Group Bank and PT. It's the one that you receive messages uh, all the time as you apply. Don't forget that. It's very important because sometimes uh, these things go to spam, okay? And it's, we, we cannot control that, okay? And uh, depending on the spam filter, it's, uh, it's complicated. As to the motivation letter is as usual, that's the most important thing is let us know who you are and why you do want to do science and why you want to do science with us, okay? That's it for the first phase. Then there is the interview. For the interview, don't get too nervous preparing and this kind of stuff. We really, really want to know you, okay? That's what we want to do. Are you one of our peers? Do we want to work with you in the future? Do we want to spend four years with you? And are those four years, are we the best people to bring the best out of you, okay? And that's what we, are, we expect to do in the interview. You see what I mean? So of course there is always, this interview is subjective, but uh, that's what we try to do. So don't 
prepare too much. Like, uh, of course, we'll ask you, who are you? Why do you want to do science? What have you done so far? So you can prepare a few uh, five minutes of description of everything that you have done so far and what you want to do in the future. That's fine. But from then on, it becomes a little bit a dialogue. And, uh, and that's it. Try to be yourself. Yeah. One person, please. please. I want yeah. to know, since the program is in Portugal, so do someone who is not, is not Portuguese speaker need to, to have some knowledge in Portuguese? No, it's in English. So, okay. so we will have to get through the problem of getting a visa. You will have, it's, it's not easy, uh, particularly for uh, uh, non-European countries, but we, we help you in doing that. So, so we have received people from all over the world okay. and we take care of the paperwork together with you. Okay. Uh -huh. so that's, but once you are here, it's English. So the official language in the Institute is English. Uh, or whatever language we speak, which is, as my supervisor used to say, you don't speak English, you speak Esperantish, which is a, a weird language that uses words in English, but it's not real English, but everyone understands. It. And that's that's what we speak here. And so uh, it's like it's like here, you where I'm here, the, the program is in English, but the, the, the country language is Portuguese, Cabo Verde. I don't know. Yeah, but one, one of the cool things about Portugal is that we, we most people speak English. Uh, some people even speak French. Everyone speaks Portuñol and understands Spanish. So everyone, you, you will be, if you speak Spanish, you will be understood by everybody. So it's, it's actually a quite uh, interesting country to live, uh, particularly because we are a very safe country, which is something important to say here, particularly for people from Brazil or uh, Latin America uh, and so on, Portugal is extremely safe. So you can walk around and everyone will treat you well. So you can walk around anytime in the evening without major difficulties. Okay. So it's not something that you would do in uh, some places in Sao Paulo or Rio or in, uh, in Brazil or in Mexico City that you will not feel safe doing here, it's quite, quite okay. We had a question from Raquel. Yes, uh, so basically when we're doing the application and putting our CZ information in, uh, would you give preference to people that have previous experience on a research lab or it's easy for some that it's coming straight out of her, their masters to, to get into the PhD program? Well, I think the experience in research will help you through all this, N not only through the, when we evaluate your, because the CV counts, okay? The, not much as, well, as much as the motivation letter and so on. And also because doing research helps you to discuss with scientists, it will also shine through the interview, okay? But this being said, since we are looking at smart people that can solve, think uh, out of the box, uh, then if you think out of the box and you can make that come through in the interview, you, you, it's likely that will get you. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah, thank you. Um, to the previous question, the AGC also offers Portuguese class. So if you really want to learn Portuguese, then you can enroll into Portuguese classes and they are determined by your level of um, understanding and you're put into the right level and you really learn fast. We have a friend that comes from Ghana. She knew nothing of Portuguese and now she's almost proficient, <laughs> but she, she pretends she's not. To the question that uh, was just made, uh, I had something, but I don't remember anymore. Ah, yes, there were a lot of people that got into the PhD program right after the, the masters, I think, right, Judge? Yeah, so, yeah. 
having a technician position or having worked in, in research is not a requirement. Yeah, even these people that in, if you have uh, come from a country where you have a licenciatura or something like that, a four year degree, even without research, that makes you eligible for the program. And those people have entered the program. Okay. Again, if you have experience in research, and uh, I was also almost not thinking about being a technician in the lab, but having done research in a master or an internship during the licenciatura and so on, that helps because makes you makes you more easy at discussing science. That's essentially it. Having been exposed to science makes you more uh, at ease talking about science with scientists. But that's the main advantage, okay? We really try to get into your creativity, your outside of the box thinking, your critical uh, way of, of analyzing things. Are you critical? Are you, that, those are important things, okay? Getting messages. Yeah, we, we've had uh, people that have no uh, lab experience also in the program. Yeah. They are like fully theoreticians. So it's, well, we, have, uh, we have theoreticians that have done theoretical biology as a PhD. We have theoreticians that decided what I want to do is experimental work. And they yeah. went to the, to the lab and started pipetting. They spent something, typically you spent eight months or nine months, like a pregnancy, which is just a nine months of, of torture because in practice you don't pipe it well and then you're uh, what am i trying to say here most of these people that are theoreticians they are quantitative they want to do quantitative experiments quantitative experiments are harder to do than the other experiments because they require better controls better things and so on so they are tougher than normal experiments and so these guys they suffer a lot because they start from not even being able to pipette two microliters of something into uh, one milliliter of another thing to being able to do something that then they can actually import into their favorite software to do analysis and analyze the data. So it's tough, but we'll be here for them. <laughs> so, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. So for the, uh, I want to come back to the application. So for example, about the referee, the, the referee, is only two or we can put three? Well, you can put as many as you want. I think there is no limit on the, okay. so, but you so, require two. So, uh -huh. so, okay. yeah. so, so because sometimes some of our supervisors are going in, in, in C, when they are in C, they cannot see emails. If, if they, you need the feedback uh, in a short time. So maybe I'm thinking to put three or more than. Well, my recommendation in that case is so the, the deadline for submission of the, the references will be the 14th of March. Okay. My recommendation is submit your application as soon as possible so okay. that you can contact these people before. Okay, good. Okay, I'll tell them. I will let them know. Thank you. But even people that are in boats, typically they, they have access through to mobile through mobile phones, so that's fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no more questions. We have eight more minutes. So well, if there is no questions, we can start talking making questions ourselves. <laughs> like, uh, why do you want to do science? It's not well paid in general. Not kidding. Why do you guys want to do science? <laughs> mm, I... I I am been I have been trying to discover that answer for some time, uh, but um, I think that I want to go through a path uh, when, who enables me to to be useful for society in a more humanistic way. That's why I'm trying to 
run away a little bit from physics and go into the life sciences because I want to feel uh, a humanistic, humanistic purpose in my work, not just science uh, that is abstract. I find that very funny, because, yeah, and uh, I'll tell you why. Because I, I've been writing a paper about uh, Faraday, oh, the Faraday, okay. the, the person that has changed the world the world that we live today is, was created by the science of Faraday. And he had no interest whatsoever in uh, improving the world and this kind of stuff. He ended up doing it. So he did a fantastic discovery. So, so he actually didn't get the money for... So Siemens, the guys that he created the electric cars and this kind of stuff, and the, uh, how do you call it, the tramways, made a lot of money. So Zeman still has existed as a company, but uh, Faraday didn't even patent the, the discoveries that he made. And uh, in some sense, uh, it might be a tough call. So, so I, I, I've nothing, a lot of my colleagues, and maybe the two students that are here have that idea that they want to do biology and biomedical science because it's a way of helping the world. I quite frankly, I think you should try to do science, but that's my opinion, to have fun of doing science, okay? Because all the rest comes up after with the quality of the science. The, quality, the good science will always have impact. And the, the reason I'm saying this is because sometimes you choose a project to, because of the potential impact, but in the end, but you will never see that impact. And if that's what drives you, it might be tough while you are doing the actual, the, the, your actual research that is sometimes far away. It, I'll give you an example, maybe it's easier. I know a lot of people that love and get in love with neurosciences because they think about the complexity of the cognition and the consciousness and the collective behavior of humans and so on. And then they started doing, doing research in neurosciences and end up looking at the, uh, physiology and biochemistry of neurons, which, which is fun, but is very, very far away from cognition, consciousness, collective behavior of humans. You see what I mean? And, uh, yes, and then, yes, yes. So always try to get fun of what you do, because that it's the fun and the curiosity, every, wanting to know the answer of that question that you are going to try to answer that day. That's the, the thing that gets you out of the bed and uh, keeps you in the shower without even noticing that whether you have actually soaped yourself or not. And it suddenly you say, oh, uh, it's, did I soap myself? And Because uh, you are thinking about your problem. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. No, no, it's fine. I was just going to tell George that he was wrong. I never really wanted to do stuff for the society. I thought in my bachelor's, I thought I never want to do research because everyone wanted to cure cancer. And I was like, why? Why? Everyone is doing it. And then I ended up doing a bachelor internship in a research center. And I loved it for the thrill of it, for the curiosity. I just I do science because I like to understand how things are true you have to use these things that it's going to help human health I work in sepsis and all of that but I'm just truly interested in knowing how things work how biology works how these cells become this it's just the curiosity that drives me but I never thought I wanted to do research in my life until I did it <laughs> <laughs> Romana do you want to um, I was one of those that wanted to cure cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but now I'm working on like fundamental biology of plants. So, and I'm doing it for because I'm very curious to know what the proteins I'm studying are doing uh, besides what they've been described to be doing. So, yeah, at the end, this curiosity does driving me. <laughs> well, there is one thing. Uh, now that uh, we talked about curing cancer, there's nothing wrong in trying to cure cancer, okay? But if, uh, if you want to, uh, an example, an example from the history of science, 
I don't know if you guys know that Nixon, the infamous Nixon president, made a big project, putting a lot of money on fighting cancer. Okay, it was the war on cancer, as, as you used to call it. And this was in a period where reverse transcriptase was discovered. So retroviruses that would actually make uh, co copies of RNA to DNA that would then insert in the genome and this kind of stuff. And people thought that this was the cause of cancer. Okay, and so the, the whole financing of the war on cancer was based on this thing of retroviruses and this kind of stuff. The scientists, most of them, they were very interested in uh, reverse transcription process, which was violating the dogma of molecular biology. And they ended up discovering all sorts of inhibitors of uh, uh, these retroviruses. You know when it was useful? It didn't work at all on cancer. So exactly. none of this money solved anything on cancer. It solved part of the problems of AIDS. That was the drugs that were discovered in that period that allowed, the created the fundamental knowledge that allowed to make triple therapy of cancer. Okay. And, uh, uh, sorry, triple therapy of AIDS that transformed AIDS that was an acute disease that could kill you, fatal disease, into a manageable chronic disease. Okay, so again, science has this funny part, which is you might want to think that you are going to solve a big problem, and you might be creating the knowledge that will solve something that you would not even predict. You see what I mean? So as long as you have fun. Yeah, because you... daily you're so, is what George said, Sorry. so yeah. far away from the patients. Oh, we need to leave. Okay. Yeah. You just need to find something that you like to do, that you love to do every day, and keep that going because I. Hello. Because we were talking about why you do science and and if it's there's a greater purpose or you want to help society, but the truth of it is, we work in so tiny things that there is a, a greater purpose at the end. But you need to have something to keep you going every day when things don't go well. And uh, to not think that society is going to fall apart because you don't make it, but to also make you go to the next day and try again and think that maybe this is not what you expected, but you can get something else out of it. So you really need to find that thing that keeps you going. That's why you like to do it. It's, for me, it's curiosity. I just like to understand why it worked or why the hell it didn't work. <laughs> and I'm just banging my head against the wall. But I like that. And it's yeah. fun, no? Yeah, it's fun when you're not banging your head against the wall. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's fun. It's really fun. I, I really love it. Even if it's hard, even if they tell you the PhD is very difficult, I, I'm in love with science, so <laughs> that's it. <laughs>